Hello friends, thank you for joining me once again for another episode of My Big Fat Mouth. We're going to be diving straight into this one, sitting down with a wonderful friend of mine from Twitter, and uh, we're going to be we're going to be going for it. This is a lengthy episode today. We had a lot to chat about, and I really didn't want to edit too much of it. Uh, one thing I do want to note just before we go into the episode is that my guest did have a tiny few little audio problems. There weren't anything that anyone could do about it. It wasn't anyone's fault, but Fortunately, for the most part, they're not too bad. There was a couple of areas where they just cut out a little bit, and I just asked them questions again or got them to repeat themselves. So just bear that in mind. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with your earphones if you do hear audio dropping every now and again, and we did our best to work around it and fix it. So with all of that said, enjoy the episode. Welcome to the show, Chrissy. Thank you so much for joining me. I, I like to start things here nice and simple, so uh, why don't you just tell the people who you are and what you're all about. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, I seem to have um, lost yeah. your seem to have lost your oh. audio feed for a section there, for a second oh, there. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for inviting me to come onto your show. Um, so yeah, basically my name is Chrissy. Um, I have part of the kind of online Warhammer now last year. <laughs> um, God, that's that's flown. Um, and yeah, I'm predominantly a miniature painter um i do a lot of 40k stuff um i do the odd bit of age of sigma you'll find out about that later on um i do also play um i'm i wouldn't say i'm a seasoned player uh, i only kind of came to 40k uh, at the well i kind of at the tail end of eighth edition sure um and uh i kind of you know i dabbled in kill team kill team was like the starting point we, we've had a uh, kill teams come up a number of times recently and uh, yeah. i've started to refer to it as the uh, the crystal meth of war gaming pretty much it's, it's just <laughs> so much. easy to get hooked yeah definitely and um so yeah that's that's kind of like where it started me getting into gameplay and stuff like that um you know it, it helps that i've got a partner who's been playing 40k for about on and off for about the last and you and like your that. partner actually produce warhammer content as well right we do yeah um so i do a lot of the kind of Painting. my partner paints as well he doesn't uh joe he doesn't paint as much but he does sure. do a lot of like kind of custom made stuff so we've done a lot of like laser cutting laser engraving wicked stuff like that as well um but yeah we'll talk about that in super cool yeah um so i've been really looking forward to getting you on the show obviously we've been friends on twitter now for for a while and you know we've yeah. had a number of twittery back and forths and i thought to myself when i first started to put together the ideas for this show that you would definitely be one of the people who i think would be very interesting to chat to because unlike a lot of people in this hobby you sort of have a finger in almost every pie you're interested in so many parts of it yeah <laughs> so um i have a feeling that that we might we may have to actually make a, a conscious effort not to ramble on too long let's um yeah. let's steamroll into our first section uh this is where i'm going to ask you what have you been up to uh, so uh what are you what have you been up to mate what have you been up to so yeah chrissy tell me what have you been up to what have you been up to lately uh Yes, so um, I've got a couple of projects going on at the moment. Um, I have got a kind of secret project that I can't really reveal. Oh, teasing us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that I can't really reveal at this time. Um, so I know I've been a little bit kind of quiet on my kind of side of things, but I haven't because I've actually been doing this project in the background. I see. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I have been painting. I just can't show any of it off. For sure, for sure. Um, personal 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 projects for myself um i kind of i kind of it's not really a new army um but i kind of want to start off or kick off ninth a, a brand new um i kind of had it from last year but i just have never had a chance to get involved with it and stuff like that so i've decided for ninth edition i'm going to get um a combat patrol or 500 points worth of death guard nice a nice little Nice little list. Yeah, that's a uh, fine choice. 400, yeah, 495 points of Death Guard. F funny um, enough, my I, my last guest on the show, Emma, um, yeah. she's just recently started collecting Death Guard as well. And yeah. she said to me, um, 
I started collecting them just because I really liked the look of them and I was really looking forward to painting them. And, you know, I wasn't really thinking about whether or not they'd be good in the game. And I just sort of thought for a minute, I was like, yeah, what you've done there is accidentally chosen probably the best army for the edition. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there are rumours that pretty much it feels like ninth edition have written just for, just for death. Yeah, like they look that. like but they're no, going to think... be really good. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I kind of painted some, like, last year. Um, I kind of painted the odd models. and I've got, like, I had 10 box walkers. Um, I did that when, contra you know, I did them as out of, like, the, my first contrast job. They came sure. out really well. So, um, so yeah, I've got a my Fittic Blight Hauler and five Plague Marines paint up. Five um, Plague Marines? Was that, sorry, was that two paint up or painted up? To, to paint up. To paint so. up, okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. We're, just, we're still getting <laughs> yeah, a couple of those little three... skips in the audio, so if I ask you to repeat <laughs> so, anything, do forgive me. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I've got five Plague Marines to paint up, uh, my Fittic Blight Hauler, um, and then that was it, because the other part of my army is the Ten Pox Walkers, and I have a Lord of Contagion. Oh, and I also have a Malignant Plague Cast as well. I have a feeling a Lord of Contagion will be very, very good in 500 points games. That is a hard unit to kill, and it is a very killy unit. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've kind of, it's, I've, I've kind of like, basically my, my Death Guard, I started this theme last year, and I kind of liked, I, I, this is really one of these weird things where I was sat in the garden, and a fly came over and sat and flew up around. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So, um, so I was like, oh wow, this sounds wicked. And um, so yeah, I was like, right. I'm doing a fly themed death guard. So I've got like a, a colour shift paint. So you you will notice when you see them later on is they have got a slight kind of sparkly sheen. So I've I've left them the death guard green, but I've managed to find paint kind of like complementously. So they've got like a little bit of a sparkle to them. A that bit sounds like really awesome. Sea. Yeah. And, um, it sounds like a very are... different approach as well, which is nice. Like, yeah. D Death Guard is it's very easy yeah. to feel a bit sort of cornered, isn't it? Into like, you have to yeah. paint them this way. Yeah. So that's really yeah. cool to, and... to hear of somebody sort of pushing that a bit. Yeah. And um, and I went full on with the fly theme. Um, so like all their tentacles are going to be like kind of that pale maggoty kind of skin that you see. Like, I, that's horrible. Uh, but all, all my pox workers are all going to be like really bright multi See, okay, now, now you're just, crazy. you're making me want to go and watch the um, the Jeff Goldblum film, The Fly. I'm a massive fan of oh. that film and I've not seen it for years. Yeah, it's gross. It's gross. Yeah, and like I said, I've got a, I've got a squad of Blight Lord Terminators to paint up and build at some point. And one of them is, look, one of them looks just like he does when he's in The <laughs> Fly. <laughs> I, I tell you, I am terrified. I have currently four armies and honestly, I don't think any of them has like something that is a good counter to a unit of Blight Lord Terminators. That's the yeah. one thing I'm so scared of encountering at the moment <laughs> in games. Yeah. So they will be added eventually. So I am going to do them a bit like a slow grow, um, have a bit of a slow grow army and stuff. They're not going to be like amazingly painted. I'm kind of going to get them. They're going to be like my battle ready kind of yeah. army yeah. as well, which is fine. Um, I I'm cool with that. Um, and yeah, and I've, I've named them the, the Wretched as well. The so Wretched. Be, my army to be like based on, they're just called the Wretched because think, they're like, and eventually I'll get Mortarian. I think know. sometimes, you know, when we, when we make a decision to paint an entire army, we take that on as a project and it can sort of feel like it's going to be something very daunting, very overwhelming. And I think sometimes, yeah. you know, just making that decision up front to just say, I'm just going to paint this army to like battle ready. And then if I want to start going back in and yeah. tarting stuff up at a later day, if, if I feel the, the motivation yeah. or the, or the enjoyment yeah. is there, then I'll do it. But it's, it's okay to just say, I'm literally just going to paint this army to, you know, a good enough standard that I'm not embarrassed to put it on the table. Oh yeah. Essentially. yeah. No. It's exactly the, the same. About... Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, I was going to say, and the great thing about Death Guard is because the other like main army I collect is Drukari mm -hmm. and, they are an absolute in the ass yeah. like sport. Whereas, fortunately, with Death Guard, um, like they're a bit more chunkier, and I feel like I could put them in a box and not going to get like smashed. Or anything yeah, like no, that, absolutely, you know I mean? so, absolutely. They're yeah. um, they're, they're one of those armies. You know, they they forgive heavy washing. They forgive you not looking oh, after yeah. your miniatures too well. They they're, they're generally very very forgiving when it comes to the sort of hobby side of the hobby. Yeah, it's definitely. kind of one of the nice things about collecting them. Yeah, definitely. 
Nice. So, Anything yeah, that's else going kind of on? Like, yeah, I was going to say. So that's kind of like my my current my slow grow project. Um, I've been painting Stormcast Eternals. So I think people have been seeing around the internet that I've been doing a bronze themed anti bronze Stormcast Eternals. Yeah, there's been a lot of interest body. around your metal workups. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I I found a way of of painting metals metallic armor that really kind of it does it particularly quickly, quickly effectively as well. Yeah, because we've, um, we've actually so... seen a few iterations of this from you, haven't we? Like those of yes. us that follow you on Twitter, you've kind of been yes. Yes. posting the sort of re each revision yes. of the recipe. Yeah, yeah. So I started off, it was started off as a gold. Um, I started off as a, it was a dry brush gold. And um, I'd started it off on a bit of scenery and I, it had a really good effect. But you know what? I want to see how this would look on something a bit more kind of where the gold was more prominent. Sure. So that's when I did um, Zandria Azabar. Um, so then I did her in the same effect. I did the same technique. In fact, it's basically just dry brushing gold on, mm -hmm. on a black primer. Um, and then, uh, as as, crunch, as controversial as this sounds, you then go in dry brush and then you go in recess shade in to make it look more anti Yeah. Worn. So it's kind of like... Because what you using... The, it, it was like... Did I did I understand right that you're using basilicanum grey, even though you're yeah. shading a red metal, yeah. which traditionally we would use a red shade for? Yeah, yeah. So it my, the way that I do my bronze at the minute is I do two levels of bronze. So I dry brush it at the minute with brass scorpion to get the kind of the first layer of that bronze on. It's a heavy dry brush, almost like a wet, almost practically like a wet dry like brush. Like an overbrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I go in with Hashut copper. And then I'll go in with Basilicon and Grey to recess shade that and it gives it, and then like not just pin washing, but kind of dragging it into and kind of smudge, like almost kind of like smushing it in. It's a kind of bit. like glazing into the recesses in a way, isn't yeah. it? You're sort of pushing yeah. directionally towards the, the yeah. recesses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then that, that gives my initial shadow and then make that uh, bronze really pop. I then do layers of flesh wash. So I do a Gulliman glaze wash first over there and then that will also kind of bring out the um that also brings out the um the shadows in so that and kind of warms go... it back up and stops that basilicon yeah. and gray from kind of making it too yeah. cold yeah it's and, very clever um, painting and also, yeah and also as well because i didn't i felt that it was still looked too gold so i was like oh fuck it i'll go in and do it with another layer with another darker flesh wash so i did it with fire slayer flesh on top which Ooh. gives it like the proper red bronze and then after, and then I go over it with the. I do a light normal, as in a normal dry brush of like Sycorax bronze. So that's kind of like my high highlight. You, you're describing all of this effort that you've put into it, and I'm thinking, hang on, she started off here saying that this was a quick way to do it. <laughs> seriously, seriously, it's it's super quick. Like at the minute, I'm I'm kind of working through a a night quest store at the, minute, and I've done. I was kind of I was watching a film at the same time, so I was like dry brushing it. Because dry, dry brush, it literally takes like five minutes to dry. You can literally put them on as you finish. And because with the basilicon and grey bit, it's a recess. It's really quick. And then right, yeah. by the time, yeah, and then by the time you're putting on your um your, your contrast paint, so your Gilliman, your Gilliman flesh and your fire slave flesh, they they tend to I find because they dry quicker than normal washes. Yeah, about an hour I, I suppose time. the thing with contrast paints is like when you're lathering them all over, they do take a fair while to dry. Yeah. But if yeah. you're sort of recess shading with them, then there's so yeah. much less paint there in the first place. I yeah. suppose it's gonna, it's just yeah. gonna dry quite quickly, just because there's not a high yeah. volume of paint there. Yeah, exactly. Clever um, stuff. Yes, yeah, so that's yes. Yeah, so that's that. And then um, I still haven't decided on a on a, a storm uh, a, a storm host net for them. I keep going through different things. I still haven't decided. I've got a bit of, and again, same with the background as well. I like to add a little bit of background like that. These initially started off as just doing Warcry Warbands, and now I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I Stormcast it's, it's, it's the uh, It's the kill team story all over again, isn't it? It's yeah. The, uh, yeah, I'm just going yeah. to have like one kill team, you know, maybe a second. And yeah. then you look, <laughs> like, I, I, I look at my shelf where all my kill teams live, and I think I've got like 10 or 12. Yeah. Like, this was supposed like, to I'm... just be a casual like low miniature count way of actually yeah. owning painted things i know i know exactly and i was thinking to myself going oh i'm gonna buy the battle tome i've got the i bought the stormcast eternals battle tome and i was like i'm only just gonna buy it for the background i really like I've, I've always loved stormcast eternals and i'm like ooh, rules <laughs> stuff like that they, and, they know yeah. how to get you 
They know how to get you. You read those rules and you go, oh, this is powerful. I'd quite like to try this on the table. And and also having the mortal, you know, the the bit part magazine, the Mortal Realms magazine doesn't help when it's like, it's Nighthaunt and Stormcast Eternals. And it's like, I just keep picking out the certain models that I want, which is where I got my Night Quest. So, but yeah, and I've got like other random models here and there like that. Weirdly, I've ended up with like 20 liberators. <laughs> no intention of using them so i'm like so i'm doing this weird thing as well so this kind of leads into the next bit where i started building liberate to test out space marine color scheme well i mean if you've got no use for them it's still plate yeah. armor exactly and i was like well you've got pauldrons you've got armor you've got i can use a sword for power swords i can use a one of the hammers as like a gun it's a good idea yeah, yeah it's a good idea it's pretty much which is what I've done. So when I I had a, a I had a green stormcast eternal again, which I did the similar thing, dry brushing, recess washing, and stuff like that. Which was I'm testing out my salamander again. I, w- I want to build a salamander's army again for ninth. Is this well. going to be another combat patrol, or uh, are you going to go a bit more adventurous? No, on this one? I think I would like pre- I would like a nice kind of two thousand salamander's army uh, sure. because I think most of it I've got all the blade. It's very much going to be a close combat face to be completely honest with you i am of the opinion that if you want a 2000 point army right now space marines is a really good idea because you don't get that many for 2000 points now with the new points increases and how expensive some of the new units are if you want to collect like a mostly primaris space marine force yeah you don't really get that many miniatures i've got a, a 1500 point list over there that is mostly focused on infantry the only vehicles in yeah. it it's got it's got six outriders in it which are not really vehicles yeah and one redemptor yeah. everything else is infantry and there's still yeah. only like 30 miniatures yeah i think that i think initially i think we worked like as joe helps me write my lists a lot because i'm rubbish at list writing <laughs> um and we, i think we're up to about seven i can't remember how many points 1700 points because i really want to wait for the chaplain on a bike even though i'm yeah. not using bikes in my army but i just want i just want to be able to have a chaplain on a bike that he can whiz around all my little squads and like give them all their buffs yeah no i'm, I'm planning to do exactly the same yeah. thing at the moment i've got a judicia and a chaplain in the list yeah same but here. same here, yeah. i'll be what i'll be doing is dropping the judicia and putting the chaplain on a bike because i figure okay. that's going to work out roughly yeah, points yeah. parry you know somewhere yeah. in the region of and then I think I'm also going to wait for the multi-part Blade Guard veterans as well, because I've got the f- the mm. first squad from Indomitus, but I would very much like another three so I can have like a squad of Blade Guard veterans as well. So I'm not going to lie, I'm not the hugest fan of Blade Guard veterans, but okay. by all accounts, everything that I've been seeing in terms of like tactica and competitive talk, people are saying they're one of the best units in the box. Apparently they're like really, really deadly interesting is it it, and it's yeah maybe we'll have to wait and see because i I have got the blade guard ancient with them as well i mean i guess they are hard to kill you know they they have the the two up save from having the storm shields so yeah probably pretty good it's crossed yeah and i was gonna say i have gone full like aggressor heavy on this particular so much (laughs) so much yeah and i guess if it's salamanders you're doing flamestorm aggressors Oh yes, <laughs> so punchy like in your face, punchy flamers and stuff like They're that. They're just well. so, so good. Yeah. I mean, like you yeah. have to pay a command point to Overwatch now, right? But when yeah. you've got a squad of three that does sixty six auto hits, you're paying a command point to Overwatch, yeah. aren't you? Like you just if somebody's yeah. stupid enough to charge that squad, you're well, paying a command yeah. point. I am. I am going to do. I, I tend to. I, I my idea is is I'd rather use the aggressors strike you know so they, they they start off the table and literally they'll just turn up at a table get just surprise bastards <laughs> yeah for sure you know? for sure i actually I, I discovered something by accident the other day i was doing some updates to my blood angels list working towards the uh the 2000 point mark and um i noticed that a minimally equipped space marine terminator squad is about yeah. 170 points at the moment. So if you just take five guys, four with Stormbolter and Power Fist, and the Sergeant has Stormbolter and Power Sword, which is, you know, minimal equipment, um, it's about 170 points at the moment. And I looked at that and I was like, these guys are getting three wounds in the new edition, and they've got a two-up. Like, this is probably one of the best objective-holding units you could ever hope to have. Yeah, yeah. And 
obviously, because I'm playing like a Blood Angel successor, you've got, um, yeah. in the Assault Doctrine, you've got an extra attack, you've got an extra attack on the charge and you wound one easier, you've got Shock Assault, then you've got like the buffs that your chaplains can give, the buffs that your librarians can give. Like, there yeah. are some ridiculously insane Space Marine units yeah. that are going to be jumping around very, oh, very yeah. soon. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I lo I really like it as well that with um, salamanders, um, you can give the sergeant a um, thunder hammer and a uh, hand flamer as well. So, <laughs> Which is the most ridiculous you know, combination of weapons ever. Yep. <laughs> so not quite, not quite a smash, not quite a smash captain, smash captain level sergeant, but no, you know, <laughs> no, flash. But, uh, the fact that I, you know, I've got a fucking, I'm gonna have a fucking sar. Well, I'm gonna have two sergeants, I think, that have both got hand flamers and thunder hammers mm. as well so <laughs> it's gonna be scary 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 stuff yeah. I'm, I, I, i'll tell you what actually i know obviously uh we we happen to live in quite close proximity to each other so we have sort of threatened yeah. a few times that when lockdown is no longer a thing <laughs> we'll be having yeah, a game yeah. so uh hopefully we'll be able to have like a, a space marine yeah. clash at some point uh, kind of you know butt heads with our two space marine yes. lists and uh and probably, see how it works out won't be a while but it'll probably be more it'll probably be more Drukari because i've got more of that built yeah to be um, fair i've but... got i've still got to get well I'm, i've not gonna get any of it built but i've still got to get literally the entire list painted i'm just looking over there now and oh, only gosh. the test miniature is painted oh my god yeah that's... yeah so there's still a yeah. lot of work there on the upside my word bearers that's a bit more realistic i'm probably only 10 miniatures from done with them so you know we could maybe do like word bearers versus Drukari quite soon at least that, that's good that's gonna be a bloodbath and a half <laughs> yeah that sounds like a pretty good battle actually it does sound like a pretty good battle especially yeah, yeah. that's gonna be a... yeah we that's should make be it pretty, happen pretty gory <laughs> we should we should definitely make Either it that happen. or death god oh you could always do like heretic versus heretic you know word bearers versus death god that sounds all right to me as well i don't because you said you've only got about 500 points of death guard uh, I have, I did build my tank, even though my Plague Burst Crawler isn't part of my 500 points. Um, I wouldn't be able to fit it in, but I've also got a, a couple of other models that have been built, but haven't been fitted. And so so you could like, probably push to like 750 to 1,000. Yeah, if I could. Yeah, I've got like a fetid bloat drone as well. Well, built stuff like that. Sure. So worst comes to worst. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that, sounds right. The that sounds like something we could make happen. So it's been a uh, secret project, Death Guard Army, Bronze Stormcast Eternals, mm. testing out Salamanders. You've been very, very busy. Let's yeah. um, let's go through to our next section where we. I like to talk about sort of the things that are exciting us now. Uh, the, you know, the stuff that we've been doing. It, it generally is quite exciting, but sometimes it can be a little bit. You know, you can be a little bit frustrated, yeah. not type of it. So this next section tends to be the big positive sort of outburst. Now uh, we're going to ask, what are you high on right now? <sighs> yeah, what am I high on right now? Fortunately, there was a new re preview at the weekend. I was absolutely buzzing of all the, about the new all the new stuff that came out. Um, that's proper got me really excited. So um, I'm actually going to sound like the worst Warhammer content creator in the world right now. I've still not seen it. I've had a couple of looks at links oh to the Warhammer gosh. community website, <laughs> but I know nothing about it at this point. Oh gosh. Well, um, so my my favourite bits. So what basically what's in a in a kind of a you know in a too long version so we've got a new necron character that's coming yes. out so the guy with the the destroy he's kind of the a new death hex destroyer. something destroyer guy yeah hex mark, hex mark thing the dude that's got six six eyes and six pistols fucking hell you know sounds great yeah yeah it's yeah, um what's his, what's his name from star wars <laughs> general grievous <Yeah. laughs> just without without lightsabers he's just got six pistols I wonder if he's asthmatic as well, so, with, with a cough. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, isn't it? So, and he's got, like, because he's got death, because he's a death mark, he gets all the death mark buffs, but then because he's a just he's a destroyer, he also gets the destroyer buffs. It's like, uh, what? Having, it's having like your cake and insane. eating it. I know, I know. So, that, I mean, I I don't like, I wouldn't say I dis, I don't like names. I don't like playing against names because they're actually bullshit. Do you, do you find them quite <laughs> a competitive army to play against? Not competitive, they're just fucking tough to kill. Sure. <laughs> because, sure. yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I mean, they, they tend yeah. to take as big a squads as they can afford to take, yeah. so, you know, yeah. you, you've got to remove every miniature in the squad, yeah. and if and it's like a 20 a, blob... 
Yeah. And they're an army where you have to concentrate fire to like yeah. actually like get rid of things. Otherwise, because if you've got things like reaction protocols, if you need like one per one person out of the unit, it would just be like, oh, hello. Yeah. Oh, and then and then of course like... the there's a, a new cryptic model which is very popular, yeah. which improves their reanimation protocols. Yes. So, yeah. Is it cryptic yeah. or canoptic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which one is it? Uh, it's, one of them. Uh, it's, it's the canoptic reanimator. So, sure. um, yeah. Which is kind of a clue in the name, isn't it? So, oh, probably, yeah. I yeah. should, should have probably put that one together for myself, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there's that. Uh, yeah, and I just look. I thought it just looked really cool. Um, I, you know, I, I thought it just looked really cool model. Um, the other thing, the new war cry set. Uh, they so there are two war band, new war bands that they kind of announced as part of the new war cry set. Uh, the scions of the flame, and I can't remember the name. Sh Knight Shadows of Knight I I I just know they got Knight in there. I sure. can't remember what they are, but both of them look absolutely amazing. I think the Warcry set looks absolutely amazing as well. It's like one side is like this flamey. It's like Hero. It's got bridge. It's got the bridges for Hero Quest. It looks like Hero <laughs> Quest is <on> fire. <laughs> And well, one thing I will time. say for uh, for Warcry as a game, they they seem to consistently really knock it out of the park with the with the sculpts for Warcry. Oh gosh, yeah, I've got the un yeah, and that's another one of my projects that's been kind of shelved for ages. I've got the unmade. I built them, I primed them, and I just haven't. Had it's always the way somewhere. it's always the way the, the miniatures yeah, that yeah. we most want to paint always tend to be the miniatures <laughs> that just get left on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, their their sculpts are amazing um, and stuff like that. But yeah, and then the other and on the flip, go back to the, the start. Set, the flip side of it is just kind of like your your classic war cry based stuff. So that looked really interesting, and I can't remember when they said that that was going to happen. So I'm really buzzing for that. Um, Underworlds, the new Underworld set that comes out in again. December. I know nothing about it, so feel free yeah. to educate me. Um, well. I don't play Underworlds, but I've been wanting to for ages. I bought the Beastgrave set back in May. I uh, still haven't had a chance to play it at all or anything like that. Um, and I've been meaning to learn it for ages. But again, because of the coronavirus, it's not been. It's not like I'm to get out and be like, "Hey, teach me how to play Underworlds." Because am I right in thinking that one of the Underworlds games had a bunch of exclusive Gloomspire stuff? Is that right? Or uh, some I, kind of goblin-y, squiggy stuff? That's the malign... Oh, yeah, Zarbag's Gits. Yes, yeah, that there is the a, one. Yeah, there is a, there is a war band um, called Zarbag's Gits. Um, so uh, you can... Because, like, they have three different... The way that it... My understanding... I apologise. I'll be happily corrected. But there are kind of three chapters to the whole Underworlds thing. Right. So you had, like... Shade Spire, Night Vault, and so and now we're going into. I can't remember what this is called. I can't remember. It begins with. A, I can't remember. <laughs> this is, this is the problem, isn't it? When everything's got a proprietary I name, know. you just yeah. you can't memorize them yeah. all. You can't memorize them. All. I know. It's, I know. it's the one thing I miss about the days when it was, you know, just Eldar and. Dark yeah. Eldar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It, it, th exactly. Those, are, those are real words, so my brain already knows them. I just have yeah. to say yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, all, all the war bands from the previous iterations of Underworlds can kind of carry over. So basically, like, Beast Grave is just an upgrade from Night Vault. Night Vault's just an upgrade from Shades. So all the cards and all the things will carry on over. Right, so it just continues to expand and grow as yeah. a game. That's really yeah, clever. Yeah, like, all... All they've done is effectively with the new edition, I call it. All they've done is like refine the rules. So, and if you did have cards from like Night Vault, so it's like you, you know, I could. I've only got a Beast Grave core set, but that doesn't say that I can. That doesn't mean that I can only play with Beast Grave exclusive warbands. I can. You can still sort of bring anything else in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can use all your card. You can use your deck from previous editions and stuff like that. yeah so it's not yeah. like a yeah so is, suppose, it's, it's not too much of a sort yeah. of compact and confined game it sort of allows you to yeah. just pick and choose the bits that you want yeah. and... it's just i think effectively it's kind of like think of the new the core sets as like the new chapters in the underworld's kind of sure i don't know what you want to call it the underworld's world or whatever the realm of the underworld, <laughs> the underworld. The, un the underworld world <laughs> oh you know what i meant <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> 
so um yeah and it's it's really weird like i've really got into sigma stuff lately and we and like none of our friends play it we're all very much like 40k but i, I kind of want that you know more of us would collect us uh, and like i said with underworlds and war cry it's been like the perfect introduction <laughs> yeah no no i absolutely get where you're coming from like yeah. I, I i look quite lustfully at fantasy stuff often and, and I sort of say to myself yeah. you know if I just if I knew more people that were interested I'd probably give it a go because I would love to put together like a Gloomspire Gits army I absolutely adore the way GW <laughs> sculpts goblins these days I love them uh, if so I went much Gloomspire, if I went Gloomspire and I have been very very I have been like that close to doing it I would I think I would probably run a pure squig because but also, have... like, how cool is that start collecting box? You get, like, three I trolls, mean... um, the, the shaman on the squig, like, ten squigs. Like, it's yeah. such a cool start yeah. collecting box. So, yeah, I mean, you get the trolls, but you could do anything with those. They're cool. And yeah. then you've got, like, and then you've got, um, all, I think you've got squig, do you get squig hoppers in the start collecting box? Something? I, I know that there's a lot of squigs in it. Well, I can't remember sneaky, whether they... It's sneaky snufflers or something. But, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of chumpy, spherical things you know bitey which is thing. which is what you want from your from your goblin army at the end of the day like we we, we choose goblins not for the goblins we choose them for the squigs oh yeah hell yeah there's, there's yeah, a reason I why I... I remember a period probably probably something like five or six months ago now where like almost every painting channel had done a squig tutorial recently yeah. and like every think... twitch streamer that did painting was doing squigs it was brilliant <laughs> I think it was because when didn't they re it was it wasn't no because it was last year when they released the loon curse bot but i think it was because what they did was they really i think it was the end of the year last year they released the heroes out of some age of sigma heroes and right. the loon boss on cave squid the loon boss on cave squid yes was one of them because yeah. you could only get him in the loon curse so it was either that or or the Arch Revenant. So I think a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, yay, squigs!" Because everybody loves squigs. And and I think I can't remember, but again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know because people were just like, "Hell yeah, let's go and buy squigs." I, I feel like yeah. squigs are the unofficial mascot of the hobby. Like from a, from an official, uh, you know, above the line kind of perspective, it's Space Marines. But we all know, really secretly, uh, it's it's squigs. Yeah. Can I can I just say as well, right? I think squigs would make the perfect pets. Do you not think? They'd be like, a, they're like, effectively, they're like a ferret. Well, I own a tortoise, and <laughs> that is a small, angry animal that moves a lot faster than you think it does and bites everything in its path. So I basically have a squig anyway. <laughs> but also, as well, I hear me out, right? So if you were to, to kind of to calm a squig down, I think all you've got to do is tickle it under its chin. Sure. Yep. Yeah, same thing works with tortoises. And yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I've, I've seen your tortoise. I've seen that little butt wiggle dance he does. Yeah, I yeah, you scratch his shell insane. and he's just, he's putting yeah, your hand. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet if you, if, you, if you scratch a squig in the right place, he will be like your best friend for life. Yeah, I reckon so. I reckon so. <laughs> we need to, we need to uh, de-demonize squigs. That should be a, a campaign okay. that we should start for, uh, maybe for next yeah. year. Squig, squigs, squigs are for life and not just for food, you know. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? It's like the whole fish are friends and not food thing. Squigs, squigs are life, not food. Wait, who's eating squigs? Orcs do, don't they? Do they actually? Orcs, 40k orcs eat squigs. 40k orcs. And if they're not lobbing them, if they're not lobbing them at people and not making them into like squig bombs or whatever, then yeah, they, they oh. orcs eat squigs. Well, that's made me, that's made me no. like orcs a little bit less, to be honest with you. <laughs> kind of weird isn't it it's a bit like kind of you know cannibalism in a way because they're all from the same like fungus yeah yeah they're all sort of related aren't they those kind of spore creatures i, I love the uh <laughs> the law behind how orcs exist it's so bizarre they're it's, great. it's oh, so I absolutely think, weird I, I think orcs are just like it's i think if you don't ever paint if you've never either painted a goblin or a gobbo or an orc you're just like no i don't it don't matter what anybody says i think more have everybody has I've, I've, I've just noticed as well, um, looking at the show notes here, I've just noticed that uh, you, you've put down that you're excited about something that, uh, that I actually just happened to watch this morning, which is uh, yeah. one, of, one, of the new, uh, one of the new GW painting videos. Do you want to tell us yeah. a little bit about well, that? 
Yeah, um, I've, I've actually been really, really excited to see all the paint videos again, because again, you know, we had four months of no, no, no we content, did. well, very little content from uh, Warhammer on YouTube. So it's been really, really nice to see um, get get to do what their, their day jobs again and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, um, Aeronautica. Uh, so finally, because um, I know that this video was supposed to have been published way before March. Um, but obviously because of lockdown happened. and so yeah i'd been waiting for this video for a particularly long time uh but yeah i was really you, happy you are um you are someone who is known for having quite a a liking for aeronautica aren't you yes 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 uh yeah i kind of you know gave myself the moniker of the queen of tiny planes like that yeah and, and, and it's kind yeah. of stuck i know that the, the twitter warhammer community sort of um <laughs> they they, yeah. they definitely associate you very closely with those little planes now yeah, yeah and I've, I've got i have got no issues with that um but yeah it's been because i've kind of I've, I've ran along with it and i really enjoy the game because my my first introduction of board game board gaming war gaming in general was that i um i started off doing um, i started off playing x -Wing, star wars x-wing oh wow um, so again very much this was what 20 30 I think it was so I played the first edition first edition X so it's a pretty good introduction you know most of us had to make do yeah. with hero quest yeah <laughs> well no I came into wargaming quite late um and then I you know we, we played um a lot of the other Star Wars board game like board games so we did X-Wing we did Armada I didn't like Armada so much um it was too I didn't like the whole kind of like you had to think ahead like just like ugh, too complicated at the yeah time. sure sure um, and um and then we kind of it kind of we didn't play for a bit joe found 40k and then then i got involved in 40k and all of a sudden it was like oh yeah we're gonna bring out this dogfight game imperialis and i was like, okay okay i don't want this i don't want this i don't want this because <laughs> it was absolutely and i was just like i can't justify it i can't justify it i was like there's all this other cool shit coming out i've got Car, and, and of course the more you tell yourself you don't want yeah. the thing the more yeah. you want the thing <laughs> yeah yeah and i literally was like nope i'm i'm not buying it not buying it and everyone's all like you're gonna get tired I was like nope not doing it not at there was literally a whole thing for about three months online where people were like you're gonna get tired. and i was like absolutely not i was literally flat out refusing i'd even got nick involved nick baton from wowzers <laughs> in this yeah, he was you know he was doing the bait and bait you know he was baiting me into getting tiny planes and i was just like <laughs> see i feel like I, I feel like i got a little bit lucky with aeronautica because it's definitely a game that i would like and it's definitely a game that i would enjoy painting for but yeah. at the time that i was considering buying it i was also eyeing up the kill team box set you know the the re-release one that had the tower and the yeah the one with space wolves and yeah yeah, yeah. And the kill team box ended up winning, and and this was Fair. this was back at a time you know when I wasn't sort of I wasn't doing hobby as my job at the time, so the money yeah. that I was pumping into hobby was literally hobby yeah. money. It was literally disposable yeah, income. Yeah, yeah. So I was obviously you know buying a lot less stuff, and and so that was just enough. And and I just I had my kill team box, and I played my kill team games, and I built my kill teams, and I had a good time with kill team, and just forgot yeah. about Aeronautica Imperialis entirely. Yeah. And now I'm constantly reminded about it, and I'm just like, should I just buy it? Should I, should I just get it? Right. This this is going to be here's my here's my aeronautica sales pitch now, and oh, I've said this to so many people because I have literally had people tweet me and go, tell me why I should buy aeronautica, and I'm like, well then, <laughs> so, well then, tell me why should I buy aeronautica imperialis? Right then. Well. Actually, so if you think about it, this is actually one of the most the cheapest starter sets that you get. You literally get a game board, you get two fleets, you get dice, you get game sets, you get rule, you get a core rule, you get a rule book effectively for about okay. If you were to pay full price, it's fifty okay, fifty quid. Say you get that, and that's enough to already play like hundred point dog fights, right? You have enough planes in there each side to do a hundred. If you so wish to expand it, if you need the data cards, which I think is really helpful, they're about sixteen. Okay, they're about sixteen pounds or whatever okay. it is. So that you know, they will have all your weapons because it doesn't. Your, your models itself do not have to be WYSIWYG. Okay, well, that's helpful. They had an aeronautical tour. They had the first aeronautical 
the first and only aeronautical tournament back in February last this year. Uh, and because of the scale of the models, um, you don't act the actual weapons loadouts on the planes do not have to be ZWIG, unlike what it is. That is helpful. That is definitely yeah, helpful. Really. So you can basically build your planes however you want. I mean, I've got an I've got an orc Daka jet that's basically just covered in guns because <laughs> orcs. You know, it's, it don't matter if it's legal or not. Anyway, um, but yeah, so that's like okay, you're up to like sixty quid maybe. So if you know, if you take your, you know, if you take your thingy of choice, sixty quid ish. Um, and then if you wanted to go into the campaigns, you can buy the Rinsworld campaign book, or if you were going to get the Taros Air War campaign book for the Tau stuff. Um, again, that's probably like another tenner on top of that. So it, like just to start off, it's probably about the eighty quid mark. Yeah, so, it's reasonable. Yeah, if you wanted to expand your armies, like the armies, your squadron rather, you know, it's like what thirty quid for a box. Yeah, so, you it's know, not bad. And you, get, and you do get a lot of planes. So you think in in your box. So say like thunderbolts, for example, you probably get four. You get I think you get four thunderbolts in a box, and um, and it's like thirty. Quid. So you know, you're not just getting two thunderbolts for thirty. Yeah, okay, it's with pretty like reasonable. Ones, like, yeah. So I, I, like I mean, look, than... look. In the position that I'm in right now, I'm just starting a Tau army, okay? Yeah. And drones, drones, which anyone who's played against Tau knows, we take a lot of those. Yeah. Are two for ten pounds. I know. And two then, for and they're ten like, pounds. They're on a teeny tiny like flight base as well. They're literally yeah. the size of a five pence piece. I know. Right. <laughs> so if if I can justify buying fucking Tau. Then I think <laughs> Aeronautica Imperialis feels like a pretty good deal, to be honest. Feels yeah, like a pretty and good deal. You do have drones, you know, now with the. And again, if you just wanted to buy Tau Aircast, you could just buy the expansion boxes. I think you could get oh, like. Oh, yeah, Aircast are in Aeronautica, aren't they? They are now. They came out and, yeah, um, yeah they are pretty ransom, I will say. I, I'd have, uh, I have to say, though, were I to play Tau. I think I would have to not play Viola because I don't think I can cope with painting 2,000 points of white towel and then also painting a bunch of white planes. <laughs> you could go, you could go red, I suppose. You could go like... Um, That's uh, Farsight Enclave, isn't it, red? Yeah, you could do Farsight Enclave, you know, or you could do like, I think what I've seen a lot of people... Do, so like in the, what, in Nick's video where he does in blue, I can't remember yeah. what the air cast... Sasea, isn't um, it, the blue one? And Tau Sept is the ochre know. one? I think. Yeah, Tau Sept is like your XV88 is yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. As well, so. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so, um, as you know, as a long term hobbyist, I'm sure you probably understand this yourself. You get in yeah. and out of the hobby over the years. You have times where you dip yeah. away from it and times when you come back yeah. to it. And I think it was around yeah. around the release of 4th edition was, I believe, also when Tau were released as an army, when they were actually yes. created as yeah. an army. And yeah. um that happened to coincide with a time when I was getting back into the game. So after having a you know a year or two break, I came back into the game and actually collected Tau when they first came out, and I was fucking yep. obsessed with them. <laughs> but this was fourth edition times, and they were a new army, which meant one thing: yeah. there was fuck all law, no nothing, because. The yeah. internet wasn't full of all these amazing resources that we have now. There weren't all these no. YouTubers yeah. posting tons of law like there are now. So. My knowledge of Tau is basically what was common knowledge when they first launched. Fair enough. And and I'm only just starting to learn about them again now. So like, even though they are definitely one of my armies and I definitely love them and I definitely think they're super cool, not the most knowledgeable when it comes to what they're supposed to look like or do. I don't, or... Like, to be fair, I don't even know their colour. All I, all I know is, um, you know, they were... When, well, when they were first discovered, they were really primitive. That's right. And then we went back like a thousand years later and they're like ridiculously like fucking, you know, modernised. The, the suspicion very, very is that someone stuff. may have interfered. Yeah, we don't know who, we don't know what's happened, we don't know where all of a sudden these ethereals came from. And it's just like, how is it from like, hey, hang on, 18 months ago, we bumped into these blue fish dudes and they were primitive. And now all of a sudden they're like the most high tech, super... Looking, you know, yeah, crazy Yeah, one ass. has to wonder. Something's not right there. I know, I know. Something's just definitely like, not right here? there. Right, yeah. um, <laughs> would you like to move on into the high yes. energy section of the vodcast? Oh yes. Okay, yes. let's do it. We are going to plough headlong now into the rant. Oh, 
Oh gosh. So I actually kind of lined up two two rants. It was really difficult. I will say it was really difficult for me to find something that I, would, <laughs> no. like, I wanted to rant. We back and forth a bit on Twitter, didn't we? Because know, you sort of weren't like, sure what you wanted to do. I was just like, I didn't, because I, I, I'm naturally and personally, I'm not, I feel like I'm not somebody that has very, very strong opinions. And there are sure. a lot of topics that are kind of going around on the that I feel have just kind of, if I went on about them, it would just feel like I was just flogging a dead horse or it would turn for sure, like yeah. change and stuff like that. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to change it up and I'm going to find something that really does bug me. Um, which just kind of leads on very nicely. to So the first one I was kind of wanted to talk about was um, I feel like sometimes the online community kind of likes to typecast or pigeonhole hobbyists. Like oh, yes. It's a hobby. And... Um, and but I know, but it's very different to special. So I know that there, you know, there is. A, I I think personally there is a different people who special in things such as, um, you know, such as resin for mm-hmm. or thirty Horus Heresy stuff. That's their thing. That's them special. That's absolutely fine. But it's when people get pigeonholed into it. Yeah, sort of because... only viewed in one line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I've, I've so, had it over the years where, yeah. you know, I've always been known as the guy who paints, and therefore mm. that's sort of had a negative impact on how seriously I'm taken as a player of the game, yeah. for example. And that and that's how I felt with me. It's like, although I gave myself the, the moniker of the Queen of Planes, mm-hmm. it, it felt, it, it got to a point where, I think this was probably like a couple of months ago, was just like everybody was going oh it's a tiny plane queen it's a tiny plane queen and i was like i i love painting aeronautica imperialis planes i think they're absolutely brilliant and they're absolutely fantastic to paint but i also paint other things as well yeah i am a multi-dimensional like, character <laughs> yeah yeah i am a multi-dimensional hobbyist you know i have a you know i i do paint other cool stuff and i just felt that like sometimes people were going but you're the plane queen why aren't you painting tiny planes i'm like yeah i do other paint you know and i you know to me my planes my 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 tiny my my tiny planes are really kind of like my my quick fire army that i can paint very quickly to a a high standard that i thoroughly enjoy doing absolutely loads of weathering on it you know i can do loads of weathering on it and it looks brilliant but then it's not it's not an aspect of the hobby that allows me my ability so yeah, I, you, know, I can't. You kind of there is a, a, a right yeah. way to paint a plane, isn't there? And yeah. sort of if you're yeah, good yeah, at yeah. that, you're good at it. But yeah. you're gonna want to spread your wings a little. Yeah. Pun it's, loosely yeah. intended. Yeah, and it's like you know if somebody you know if somebody who was an NMM expert all of a sudden was like doing started painting metallic, and they're all like, ugh. But why is that person all of a sudden painting yeah. metallic paints? I thought they're known as they're, they're the, the NMM specialist. Stay it's in like, your well, box. You know. You know state why should we have to keep pigeon yeah and i think it's it's sad because not only is it frustrating for the person being pigeonholed but i think what what also happens when people do that is they overlook things that you are doing that they may yeah. actually appreciate and enjoy but they just yeah. sort of because you did them they don't really give them a second look yeah. and so exactly people kind of they're sort of not just they're not just fucking you by making you feel kind of pigeonholed and, and you know, segregated, but they're also yeah. kind of fucking themselves by missing out on something cool yeah. that you might be up to. That yeah. It's not even that they're not interested in it, they just don't want to see it from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and that's it, it, that's what it started to feel like. And I was like, you know, it, it'd be just be nice if, yes, okay, you know, it's kind of like that. I, I gave myself that money and I kind of went along with it and I absolutely absolutely fine with but it's like it's not just what i do i do you know the fact that i show off the other miniatures that i paint it's like i guess the thing is that you know that that nickname is a celebration of your enthusiasm for that thing it's not supposed to be a this is all i am yeah exactly you know it's not like me you know i could i used to say oh yeah i was you know before aeronautics in my life it was like oh yeah i know i was i was strictly a drukari person but i was i was new to the hobby i was getting and I, that's all I had. That was the only army that I had at the time. Absolutely. And the thing Whereas, is, when, when we're new to the hobby, we all have like a yeah. really deep loyalty to our first yeah. faction. That's yeah. how we all yeah. get into the hobby because we yeah. connect with and identify with a faction yeah. and fall in love with it. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, but yeah, it just, and, and it's, it's just like, you know, and I just think it's just 
really unnecessary sometimes you know and yeah i know there are people who will play to it but sometimes it kind of it just gets a bit tired but then it, it gets a bit boring you know when you're just kind of like oh here we go i've now painted here's i don't know here is my storm cat eternal and they're like sure. oh my god that's really cool when are you going to paint a tiny plane and i'm like yeah when fuck I off get mate to it <laughs> you know he's like oh thanks you know yeah. thanks for the backhanded kind of oh well tiny planes when and i'm like behind me i haven't had a chance to look you know yeah and, and sure. I, I have built i have built the the planes out of the um skies of fire box i and the one it's not because this just hasn't put me off mine i still love them can't decide on a color scheme and that i think that's the one thing that's put me off at the minute is i can't think i, I can't I can't finalise what colour scheme I want, and this was the reason why I was waiting for this video to come out, because I thought it was just inspiration. And I've, I've got to say, I, I don't know yes. how much you maybe like myself in this regard, but I tend to find that once I've sort of got the colour scheme for an army mapped out in my head, that's yeah. when the excitement to do the painting yeah. starts yeah. to build. Completely um, agree with you. Before yes. you yeah. get to that point, you know, like you can... You can buy the army and go, yeah, I really want to collect this faction. And you start buying the yeah. army and you've got the miniatures. You start yeah. building them, you start putting them on the shelf ready for painting. Yeah. But until you reach that point where you've said, yeah, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. The excitement yeah. doesn't start brewing. And so yeah. why are you going to yeah. want to just sit there and, you know? Yeah. yeah I don't, I'm, I'm not the kind of, I mean, there are people who will literally go, right. I've literally, you know, they come home from with a stack of boxes or they've got a delivery and they're like, here is my 2000 point Primara Space Marine. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to be like ultramarines, for example. And I'd just be there going, nah, I couldn't buy the 2,000 points in one go. I'd rather just be like, right, do 500 points this, see how it goes. Because sometimes you end up changing things, you know. I yeah, might of do all my salamanders and go, they're too green. You know, I want them, I don't know, I want them more dirty. I'd rather have them, and it sounds really stupid saying salamanders look too green. But do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, they don't, I could be like, they don't work in my head or something like that. I'd have to like test it out first before I commit and go, right, that's it. I'm going to, you know, like darker. So I know I might do. Yeah, no, no, I, I get it. I, I've never done an army yeah. ever without doing a test model yeah. first. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. It's kind yeah, of... that's what that was my storm cast was for. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I consider yeah. the test model sort of an essential part of the process yeah. because yeah. you kind of get to sort of not just learn what you like and dislike, but you also get to kind yeah. of analyze the paint scheme from a practical point of view of like, what's yeah. this going to be like to replicate exactly. X number of times until I've got X number oh, yeah, of yeah. points. Yeah, definitely. For and sure. like, you know, if you're going... If you think about it as well, sometimes like if you're painting it one way on like infantry or maybe like a dreadnought, it doesn't always translate the same to say like a tank. Or yeah, a yeah, for sure, for sure. Because, one like, one know, of the common think... things I see is um, people design Space Marine armies, for example, yeah. where they, um, in order to designate what company the Space Marine belongs to. They yeah. use the infill of the shoulder pad, not the trim, but the actual centre of the shoulder pad. Yeah. And so, you know, it gets to the doing the dreadnoughts and they just sort of paint the top of the arm that colour and it works. And it gets yeah. to, you know, painting the various different types of units and you just, yeah. you know, it translates and it translates and it translates. And then yeah. they get to yeah. their, like, repulsor or something. It's like, well, where the fuck do I put the red on this? Like, yeah. you know, how is, how is this yeah. supposed to look like that Space Marine? Like, what, what do I do? You know, yeah. and so that's that kind of forward planning should come from your yeah. test scheme definitely definitely which is why i kind of it's kind of fallen nicely because the salamander company that i've gone for is the third company which is the pyroclast so they still have mostly green their trims are green with black but the actual drake is orange right so so if when i if because i'm going to get an impulsor as part of my army so if I am going to put like the trans the Drake transfers on that, all I've got to do is just paint it orange, or I could like yeah. pick out an orange panel or something like that. One of that... the one of the easiest ways yeah. to handle that that I've ever seen is you put the white transfer on and you just yeah. contrast paint over it. Yeah, that's pretty much my that was pretty much my plan. Yeah. So um, that was pretty much going to be my plan for that, and I'd be like, well, there you go. It's still a third company impulse. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. It's an absolutely brilliant exactly. idea. But you said you had a second rant as well. Yes yeah um it's a lot of the time it's like the kind of perceived snobbery over Ooh. tools and Ooh. paint i feel like i'm being so, baited sorry <laughs> so like don't get me wrong 
everybody has their favorite tools yes right but i think people and and favorite paint brands you know there yes. are tons of paint brands out there you know there's vallejo there's citadel you know getting up own brand stuff there's you know there's other brands out there that i can't even think of army okay army painter so they're, they're kind of like the three big ones that most yeah the aogw army painter are, are definitely yeah. your sort of three main known ones exactly exactly and um you know and i think it got to a point where there was like a period of time where i just felt that people were getting a little bit snobby about non ew mm -hmm. paint yeah it was all like oh you know you can't be classed as a high a high quality painter if you don't paint with a you, you know if you don't use you know all the usual like you've got to use vallejo because dropper bottles for the win and blah blah right blah, so, and all so stuff. that stuff pisses me off so yeah. i'm i'm yeah. absolutely with you on that side of it and they're all like oh you know vallejo it's it's already pre-thinned because it, it, you know you can put it through an airbrush and yada 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 and all oh. that stuff and i'm just like i know and then it was the whole like uh don't you know why there were people making comments about people saying oh why limit yourself as an artist by sticking to this games workshop and i'm like there is a reason why people stick to games workshop right and i know that like there are members of staff who paint with other paints but you know if somebody said to you going oh my god that model is amazing what paints did you use? i could just go and say if i knew that was painted in just citadel paints i could say it was chaos black spray a bad and black base no oil wash and i used eschen gray highlight it's you know it's yeah. a universal it's universally available universally available yeah pretty much any country you can get it in yeah. pretty much any local exactly. game store and, you can get it in yeah so you know and this is this is a very very interesting because i've kind of been on both sides of this rant yeah which is why it really interested me when i saw that you put it in the show notes because that so there are there are there are obviously two sides to this and yeah. a lot of it i think is about how we present ourselves and our feelings and our thoughts to other people and and that is where it can come off as snobbishness and that just makes people feel bad and at the end of the day we have a responsibility as humans to not act in shitty ways that make people feel bad so you yeah. know we shouldn't be questioning people's validity as painters for what they choose yeah. to use and we shouldn't yeah. be saying that you cannot be taken seriously or considered high-end unless you're working with this or that yeah that is as far as i'm concerned people that do that can get in the fucking sea i've got no time yeah, I, for agree. Them. I agree i agree however like, I, what I, I... I've heard... go on go on sorry uh, no, what, I, just, what I would like, like to offer as a counterpoint is mm -hmm. if you are someone who wants to continue to level up and grow as a painter if that if that is one of your personal goals yeah. then i do feel that you owe it to yourself to not assume that what you're told is the best is the best or that what you've happened to have stumbled upon is is the best. You owe it to yourself to try to expand your horizons, dip your toes yeah. into little areas and see if there's things yeah. that you get on with better, enjoy yeah. more, that kind of thing. Yeah. On the other side there's of that, difference. you yeah. shouldn't feel obliged. No, I agree. And it's like the whole, like... I know it's, it, this feels like I'm doing a bit of a name drop here, but like, for example, like Artist Opus, right? Mm -hmm. We know that they do high quality brushes and stuff like that. Whereas you don't need to necessarily buy Artist Opus dry brush. Absolutely. I use makeup brushes. Yeah. Okay. But on the flip side, last month, I treated myself to Artist Opus because I thought, you know what? I, you know, these are going to be probably other than you know these are probably going to be the most expensive brush set that i own mm -hmm. and it's going to feel nice i'm going to use them eventually at some point you know part of my big project i'm actually doing a lot of dry brushing so i thought i might as well pay a little bit extra for something that i'm going to get a lot of road you know i get a lot of road work out of kind of and um because i noticed that my makeup brush that i'm using is getting a little bit knackered now and people yeah, are saying sure. you know open, which is fine i don't mind paying a little bit extra to do that but it's when people are going, people are going around going, oh, you know, all the high end, or if you want to be winning Golden Demon, you've got to be using like, or if you want to be an heavy metal painter, you've got to be. See, you know, it's Windsor's, either it's either Rings enough. and Newton or Bust or whatever or something like that. It's just kind of like so, I have painted. Like I look at. Sorry. I'm, no, I'm no, no. Go on. Carry on. Carry on. No, it's it's like, good. Carry. Keep going. <laughs> I look at some of my models that I've painted, and I've you know, I've painted probably. The majority of those models with GW with the games with Citadel medium layer brush and and small layer, brush, right? And everybody 
everybody slags off Games Workshop. Oh, oh like, me, me included. <laughs> yeah. And okay, they're not okay. There is a difference in quality, I will admit. But you know what? It You can still get, you know, you can still maintain sharp points on them. Oh, I, yeah, you, you can get good layer, results with them, absolutely. My media, I, my medium layer, my, my layer brushes, you know, I haven't, these these are just the standard layer brushes. These aren't the artificial layers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've kept their point pretty much any better than these cheap ass Windsor and Newtons that I got from. You know, so, which are pure synthetic brushes. I, I just want to. I just want to quickly sort of slot yeah. something in here because it sort of weaves yeah. between a couple of your points. Yeah. Um, firstly, something that I wanted wanted to actually say was that Windsor and Newton are actually one of my least favourite brands of brushes. And obviously, as you know, I'm a professional painter, both two D yeah. and miniatures. I paint literally yeah, every yeah, yeah. single day for a living. That's yeah. my job. Um, yeah. But yeah. the reason that Windsors are, 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 are one of my least favourite brushes is actually because. I've noticed just awful quality control issues with them. It, uh, yeah. I just, if you can buy one and it is like you're painting with Jesus's own hair and it, it's just the most perfect and beautiful experience you could ever hope to have. But then you take another one out of the packet and it's in a hard plastic tube with a brush protector on it. So you know it hasn't been damaged in transit and you open yeah. it and the point is fucked before you've even put paint on it. Yeah. Now, yeah. that yeah. to me isn't okay for a 10 to 12 quid brush. That's just not acceptable. Exactly. exactly. But interestingly, exactly. on the other side of that, and this is why I was kept sort of trying to jump in, was... No, so sorry. <laughs> Artist Opus brushes are quite regularly... The, the reason they get a lot of negative press is because of how expensive they are for the quality. Yeah. It's not actually yeah. anything to do with the quality itself. They are good quality brushes... Yeah. They're just very expensive for the quality level that they're at. Yeah. They now, are, yeah. I actually buy my brushes directly from the company who makes Artist Opus brushes yeah. for and, them. And, yeah, you're not, you're, not the, you're not the first person to say that. And I've actually read quite a lot of sources. And the fact that even Artist Opus have admitted, go, yeah, yeah, they're from the same manufacturer yeah. and stuff. And I was like... And, I, I, and, and I, funny I, enough... Since I've been yeah. using these brushes, which for all intents and purposes are Artis Opus brushes, I'm yeah. actually over the moon with the quality of them. But the reason I'm <laughs> so happy with them is because I'm paying six quid each for them. Yeah, you're not paying like fourteen pound a brush or something Precisely. like that. I mean, I was, I mean, pre mm. pre lockdown, I was actually getting the majority of my brushes from like an independent artist store in, yeah. in the middle of stuff. And um, is that the one behind the market by any chance? Yes. Yeah, yes, I it love is. that store. Yeah, and it was like, you know, you'd be getting like three, you know, three three sa pure sable brushes for like 20, 20 quid or something like yeah. that. And I'd just be like, yep, yeah, I'll just get all my ones and twos and threes and whatever. And it would just be like, job done. Yeah, that'll do nicely. And, and, yeah, and and I've and again, they are really good brush. They are really good quality brushes as well. You know, I've got a couple of old knackered ones, but they're brilliant because I know that I can use them for like other things as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I, um, I, I always keep a, a couple of... Uh, really battered awful yeah. looking brushes i mean you can see that the points aren't good on these you know even without yeah. decent focus but yeah. these these fellas for for washes or for putting you know texture yeah. paint onto bases they'll save yeah. your life yeah definitely i mean i use these I've, I've got one here at the minute which i'm using to is my is my scooping brush for like putting yeah. that onto my palette exactly so yeah. i did they just dry brush it off there so i'm like it's covered in paint at the minute but so. I, I do I, I have to i have to say that the the essence of your point on this rant is actually something that we really need as a community to fucking pack yeah. in which is that yeah. that whole thing of like it doesn't even matter if it yeah. is, if, if the product that you're recommending is strictly better than the product the person's already using, it doesn't yeah. matter. What yeah. matters is, is that person happy with what they're using? Do they even want to change in the first yeah. place? Because if they, if they don't yeah. want to change and they're happy with what they're using, it's not your fucking business to tell them what they should exactly. be using. Exactly. It's not your place. Leave them alone. Exactly. It's like, yeah, it's like, so what if, you know, if they're not like, okay, I, I fully admit that pretty much 99% of the paints that I use are Citadel paints mm -hmm. because it's just easier. And, and, you know, I'll talk about my later on, but, um, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the way that I've been, it's the way that I've learned to paint miniatures so it's something that I'm comfortable with. But I have also started to introduce, you know, as I've, you know, there's certain paints that I know that Games Workshop don't do. Yeah. So like kind of, you know, fluorescent paints. So I mean, eventually I will end up getting, you know, some of the Vallejo fluorescent, which I can then use in the same way because I feel my abilities now, I can 
in the same way. But I think if I was a new person, so if this was me like 18 months ago or two years ago, and people were saying, where's to start? And people were like, oh, avoid Games Workshop like the plague for their paints. Just get their models, but don't use their paint. Mm -hmm. How on yeah. earth are people going to be able to learn to paint their mini when, they, when they're putting out like these fantastic videos to how to paint? And you're all like, right, it's, how do I colour match? It's so easy, yeah, isn't it, to assume that yeah. someone brand new to the hobby would yeah. understand something that you take for granted as knowledge, yeah. as an experienced hobbyist. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been around this hobby since 1991. Yeah. And yeah. let me tell you, I have made this mistake. I many a times have just assumed that people will know stuff because I've known it yeah. for such a long time that I just, you know, I must be common knowledge. Yeah. I've known this since I was 11 yeah. years old. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. such a shithead thing to do and like we yeah. really need to try and tell ourselves to stop it because it's like you know if you're if you're wanting to encourage people to go into games workshop stores and be like you know are they going to pick out the start collecting box of their face which is just purely mini and then they'll be like you know it's the one-stop shop for everything isn't it it's got yeah. the paints it's got the brushes you don't want to be going into a games workshop store and saying I'm only here for the minis. I've been told you paint is shit. I've been told you brushes is shit. Right. What sort of reception so I'm are you going to get? I'm going to go and buy them elsewhere. You know? Which is, uh, and, and don't get me be, wrong. It's not going to be the reaction you're going to get. Isn't don't it? don't so. get me wrong. There are some kind of traps that we should advise new hobbyists yeah. to avoid. You know, we shouldn't yeah. be letting hobbyists go in and spend 20 quid on a pair of clippers. It's, you no, know, it's just no. not fair to, to charge 20 no. quid for when, when an yeah. actual proper electronics pair with a hardened steel edge is like yeah. eight quid. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's just not cool. GW no, no. sprays, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're if you're spraying with like Xandri Dust or Retributor Armor or something like that, obviously you've got to buy that GW spray, so buy yeah. the GW spray. But if yeah. you're just after a black, a white, and a grey, you know, tell new hobbyists, oh, matte car body primer is the same thing. It's acrylic paint yeah. with a matte me with a, a matte finish to it. Oh. Well, look, I think Army Painter do sprays as well, and they do them in a yeah. bigger range of colours. You know, like so, that. so if you wanted a light, yeah, by all means, you know, like save yeah. new hobbyists from falling into these traps because there are just a few things where GW don't necessarily make them because they can offer good value. They make them because they want to offer a complete ecosystem. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's just part of being good at marketing. You know, the more the more complete yeah. your ecosystem the the day, is, they are, they, yeah, they are a business at the end of the day. So that you know. I think, and then that's what people forget. It's kind of like, you know, it, it, you know, and not, not to sound horrible, but it's like, you know, that people are all like, oh, they've got this moral obligation to do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, no, GW are a business. They're there to make yeah. money. And, 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 and they the, are at the end of the day, at, at, yeah. at the end of the day, right? Yes, if they're asking the same manufacturer that makes their pot paints to rework those formulas for a spray can and put them into a spray can, that's probably going to cost them a lot of money, which therefore means they can't yeah. sell it to you for a very good price. Yeah. But even, exactly. even so, why wouldn't they make that product when you're in their store looking for a fucking spray can? Even if you exactly. just sell them to the people that buy one on the off chance, it's still worth doing. So as a business, of course they're going to yeah. do it. And it's the be and, and I think, like I said, they have got probably got the the best range of, of primer sprays. You know, you've got pretty much yeah. covers all bases. You've got a green spray. You've got a red mm -hmm. spray. You've got a, you've got like two, three metallic sprays now. I think you? the you've majority of the base paints are represented in cans these days, right? Pretty much, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, you've got you've got your beige, your mm -hmm. dust spray. Okay, the Avalon Sunset doesn't exist anymore, but which is a shame. I mean? Yeah, it, it wasn't always that great anyway, so... <laughs> I, I, honestly, I've never used the spray can, to be fair, because I'm fortunate enough to own an airbrush, therefore, if I need to spray yeah. something in Avaland, I can do it through the airbrush. Um, but Avaland yeah. is, a, is a paint that I paint with all yeah. the time. Which is, which is interesting. Another thing that you've led on as well is, like, the whole airbrushing thing. It's like people are going, oh, you know, I've actually heard people saying that, oh, airbrushing, cheating. And I'm just like, no, it's Behave not. yourself. It's, I know, I know. You, have you ever tried doing, like, really fine work with an airbrush? It's I fucking hard. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, so I, difficult. Yeah, that's my next thing that I do. I, I'm kind of, I'm scared, but I'm also kind of, I, I'm excited. I really want to at one point because I just think it would be great and being able to do, like, proper, you know, when you see, like, proper soft shading, soft, mm -hmm. like, high and low shading that you see on some models and stuff like that. To be able to do that um, with an airbrush, I'm really excited to do that. What, one of the um, things, honestly, that I just love having my airbrush for is 
that I can get the miniature primed and base coated in yeah. five to ten minutes. You yeah. know, and that includes yeah. the drying time because airbrush winter. paint obviously dries yeah. quicker as well because it's thin layers. Yeah. And you haven't got to, and you know, you can basically do it in like the middle of winter as well, can't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... at, the, at the end of the day, you know, what, how deep you want to go into like extraction and respirators and stuff like that is kind of, you know, it's up to you to decide that for yourself. But yeah. regardless of how much you set up for it, you can always spray indoors with an airbrush. It's one yeah. of the really yeah, amazing yeah. things about yeah. having one. Yeah. And I don't see it as cheating. I just think it's just another tool. You know, yeah. again, people, they'll be like, oh, I'm exclusively an airbrush person. Or I'm, ex you know, I'm sorry, I'm exclusively a brush person. I see airbrushing as cheating. I'm like, I'm sorry, but if you've got a fucking Tyranid Horde army or a, like a load of orc knobs or something you know if you've got if you've got a hundred knobs to paint because that's how you've done your whatever how many points army i would happily sit there and airbrush a hundred knobs sorry i'm trying not to be immature <laughs> i would happily sit there and airbrush a hundred knobs <sighs> right we are adults promise we are no, yeah no we are we are definitely grown-ups we can we can get through sorry. this like professionals a hundred a hundred gaunts, I would rather airbrush a hundred gaunts than try and, like, you know, try and do any kind of contrast dip method of, of yeah, you know, for sure. painting, you know what I mean? It, if and, that was the case, if somebody... It's, it's kind um, of, it's exactly the same thing as telling someone they're less of a painter for not working with Scale 75, for example. It's the same thing. It's... That is a product that is available for painting. If it works well yeah. for you and you like to use it, use it. Yeah. It's no one else's business. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, like, I paint... Um, I, so I've actually started recently getting back into the GW system and trying to kind of find a middle ground between my own painting system that I've developed over the years and the GW system. And the reason I've yeah. done that, I've been completely transparent and open with that, is because it makes better content at the end of the yeah. day people would would rather see paints and processes that they're at least partially familiar with than stuff that's yeah. completely alien to them yeah but at the same time i still use a whole bunch of reaper msp of scale 75 uh little bits of viejo here and there especially the viejo metallics because i actually think viejo metallics are some of the yeah. best on the planet i love them yeah but, yeah but it's like finding that combination of this and that that works perfectly for you that's like been one of the most fun parts of the hobby for me experimenting with all this different shit and getting to just buy buckets and buckets of yeah. paint and you and know toy around been, with what's good yeah and it's so nice because the with the the, the range of colors that dw do at the moment now through citadel it's i haven't had to worry about mixing my own paints yeah you know, i haven't got to worry i mean yes there's a difference between like making your own blends but then Absolutely, like, yeah. you know, was, mixing yeah. is one of those things that you know there's there's yeah. context to it like i do believe that quite often the kind of base highlight highlight is it, it can be quite limiting if you want to do yeah. some more advanced and more creative painting yeah. and so you know we I, I don't believe that as painters we should feel we have to just kind of pick a triad and paint with that triad yeah but i also don't believe that as painters we should feel that unless we're mixing we're not really painting properly yeah you know it's yeah. it, like for for example uh this piece that i was working on earlier which you may have seen me pop up a photograph of on twitter yeah, yeah. is that greater possessed um yes all the blacks on it are done with the corvus black known oil dark reaper triad yeah. that games workshop recommends yeah now the reason i did that is because all of my black workups take a really long time, so they're no good for battle ready. I don't, no, I don't have because, a black you know, workup. You don't want to be spending. You don't want to be spending five weeks. You know, you don't want to be spending ten weeks painting a five man squad of like Death Watch. You know, right? Like I, I've, been, I've been painting for yeah. over twenty years, and I do not have yeah. a black workup that is suitable yeah. for battle ready. The only yeah. battle ready black workups I know are the ones that Games Workshop prescribes. So I use those. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know exactly. And it's and it's great because like you know when you, I asked some of the hobby questions you know the hobby clinic that Peachy and Nick do and I think one of the one one of the first questions that I asked on one of their first shows like way back in February I think it was it was just like how could I do highlight cloth without going through like a million glazes 
Yeah. You know, I just wanted a very quick method of highlighting, you know, coats. Because it is slow. Without having to use like, you know, and because we all know, like, you know, if you wanted to get really, really smooth highlights, it's, you know, it's it's like a, it feels like you're doing about 5,000 glazes of like practically watered down and, and the worst part about like it is, of course, you're using yeah. a lot of really light paints with lots of white yeah. in them, which are the yeah. hardest paints to glaze oh, with. God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was just great. And, in, and then, like, Peachy did it, and he was just like, here we go. Here's here's some Screamer Pink that I've just put on that's still wet. Here's some Pink Horror that's still wet. I'm just going to blend it in and just basically it was like a wet blended highlight. And I was just like, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted somebody just to do that because everybody I know, I'm, I'm like, you go on Twitter, I'll be like, how did you do the cloak? And he's like, oh, I've done through 10 different shades of pink. And I'm just like, seriously, yeah. I just want two colours. And it's, it's not know? what people two want. Two colours and maybe a wash. Like you know battle, I mean? battle so, ready or like... Um, you know, very sort of time efficient painting yeah. is what people want. Yeah. That's what people want to see. Yeah, though. you know, pe people don't want to. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly. I think I am a fairly slow painter myself. You know, in fact, I think it took me like when I was painting Zandria Azubar, I really wanted to paint her in like three days because that was the whole point of doing that really quick gold. But I got so involved in her, she took a little bit longer. But then I'm like, you know what? I don't mind that so much now. Because even even so, even the total amount of time that I spent on her was still less than I'd probably spent other models that I'd exactly yeah had. yeah. I think so I'm getting I'm getting better. <laughs> my, my whole my whole ethos behind painting these days, like my entire reason for doing things the way I do it, is I used to ask myself what is the best way that I can paint this miniature. And then when I sort of was trying to fit in the hobby alongside being a commission painter that didn't do miniatures, it yeah. became what's the fastest way that I can paint this miniature because I had yeah. so little time for hobby back then. Yeah. Now that hobby is my job, it's what's the fastest way I can paint this as good as possible. Yeah. And and I really feel like that's the sweet spot. It makes just yeah. it makes painting so much more fun. It makes yeah. it so much more I interesting. Agree. I agree. You know, because you're always focusing on like how good can I paint this silver armor without it taking yeah. more than 40 minutes per miniature? Yeah. For yeah. Example. If you think, you know, if you think it to yourself, I've got like, you know, I've got to sit there and I've got, I don't know, I've got five, you know, batch painting. I absolutely hate batch. Painting. And it's like, you know, I've got five intercessors in front of me. They've all been sprayed lead belcher. I don't want to be spending more than five minutes guys what can i do to yeah. make that look shit hot yeah in you know with the fact that i've got to repeat that consistently over five guys do you know what i mean so, and not only have i not got to get sick of painting it but i've also got to make sure yeah. it looks consistent yeah exactly because you've got to think about you think you know you could spend you could spend three weeks on guy on the sergeant and he looks brilliant or you think he looks brilliant and then you get to like the fifth one and it's like you know it's pretty much christmas and you're like it's taken me five months to paint five yeah. guys and you're just yeah. like you know is that really uh, how are you ever gonna have a fully painted army yeah. if that's your approach you know exactly. and, and don't get exactly. me wrong like i get it when just painting like single display miniatures is what people are into because you know when it comes to my commission painting services i don't do armies yeah. um yeah. you're gonna have to flutter your eyelashes and sweet talk me if you want me to paint a squad even i want to do single miniatures to display standard but that's well, because as, as lot, yeah. commission painters like we want to show off we want to show our skills we don't want to yeah. show our boredom threshold you know we don't want to display mm -hmm. to people how much toil we can do before we get sick of it and yeet it in the bin we want to show people how good yeah. we are so of course we want yeah. to do you know high tabletop or display standard or you know even competition yeah. standard but definitely it's but that's such a stark contrast from how i paint my own miniatures you know when i'm painting my own miniatures i'm just thinking about how can i make this look sick but you know be able to complete a squad of 10 in eight hours that's not gonna be yeah that's not not gonna make me think i'm never gonna i'm gonna give up painting for like the rest of my life or something exactly like that. exactly yeah. right i think yeah. i tell you what i think it's time for us to move on we do a very very yep. quick uh what's coming up section and then we'll get into the mailbag how does that sound to you Okay. Me. Yeah. Okay. Let's go then. Uh, next section is what's coming up. And so, why don't you tell me what's coming up from you? What have you got planned for the near future? God, for the near 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 to distant future. So I've got, like I said, <laughs> Death Death Guard is my kind of my big long slog, uh, and I've got this other project as well on the side as well. So there'll be a couple of stuff like that coming through. 
Um, revisit my Drukari because they've been a bit abandoned for a while. Um, you know, I will, I, I will still, I still love them. I will still collect them, but I think Drukari for me, because they're kind of not as powerful as they were in eight. They seem to have got a massive. It feels like they seem to have got a massive nerf. Nine. Well, they took a lot of points hikes. Yeah. And they I, did, yeah. That alone is yeah. pretty serious for an army like that. Yeah, yeah. And and I've got to really rethink how I play them at low points as well because of course, they yeah. can't take the multi detachment. So I've got to really kind of rethink about okay, do I want to be running pure Cabalite army, pure Witch army at 500 at combat patrol level and stuff like that? Uh, but again, painting that as well. So I've, I've got tons of new car and I'm really excited. Well, hopefully we'll get some um, new releases fairly soon to spice that up a bit as well yes yes i'm really excited um i got i, I want to pick up some more underworlds war bands to play with so i think so we're paid on friday i'm you know, getting um more great blade coven i love those Coven. miniatures the snake ladies yeah they look really good yeah. yeah um and i do want to pick up steel hearts champions as well It'd just be really nice to have the proper like a proper stormcast army because i love and again they're going to get painted up in that bronze sort that out uh, and then i've got a couple of fun builds coming up like Ooh. some big kind of almost diorama type projects so i i started collecting some night haunt models from the mortal realms magazine magazine and uh, with a view to doing a couple of kind of like halloween night kind of dire big display pieces because i thought i'm yeah, never going to play cool. with Nighthorns. i'm never going to collect them uh and i picked up some other other models on top so i've got to pick up lady alinda i've got some ideas don't 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 buy a lady alinda i've got a spare one over there you can have it <laughs> oh okay thank you <laughs> you've just you've you've just I've, I, I, she's I, built or? yeah she's built and i have started painting her Right. But the paint's all very thin because it's just airbrush layers that are on her. Oh, and I am well, never finishing her ever okay. is because... She fully, is she fully built or yeah. is she like... Yeah, she's fully okay, built. So I, might, I might have to like b uh, butcher her a bit. Yeah, so, uh... yeah, yeah. We can... I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you taking a knife to her. I don't mind. <laughs> I just honestly, I just want someone to use her. I I um I walked into because Games Workshop my, Bath. My idea is that basically, I I I think it's been done to death. But I I really want to do it. Is I wanted Lady Alinda to be like the abandoned bride, and then have the my more banshees as her bridesmaids. Oh, that's like cool. Morning. Yeah, like that's really cool. For her husband, so a bit kind of like the um, what's the what's the Lewis Carroll tale with the with the what you know the woman in. You know the one I mean. Oh no, I don't actually. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's the it's the way the, the boy finds the woman, and she's like she's basically like in a in like was really old woman, and she's been sat in a wedding dress because she was like an abandoned she was a, an abandoned bride and stuff like that. I can't remember anyway. But there was that theme, so I kind of wanted to you know she's like this abandoned Lady Alinda, she's like this abandoned bride, and then she's got the mum and banshees around her, kind of. It sounds moody. Maids. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I've got some idea. I, I, it's just, it's, I can't decide on a colour scheme for my Nighthorn. That's the problem. And I've got, that's, that's one of the diorama ideas that I do. So that's why I wanted to take off, you know, the two, the two dudes, the two ghouls that come with Yeah, her. yeah, the little banshees that are kind of woven into her hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to take those off her and just have, like, the mum and banshees around her instead. Honestly, um, she's I'll, so I'll... fucking flimsy, they'll come off no problem. I know, and I've I've seen how bouncy she is as well, and she absolutely terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> tend to refer to her as Lady Wobblinda. <laughs> yeah, I've seen like, I've seen people that like properly like bounce, and I'm just like, fuck that. I'm she, done. Yeah, you know, you know those little you know, those little dashboard dogs that sort of nod like that. She's one of those. Yeah. Jesus Christ! It's it's ridiculous. So, yeah, that, I, I, I can almost reach her. I'm so tempted to go and get her and just wobble her just to tilt you. <laughs> no, because that will just that will just like make me really kind of like oh god. <laughs> so yeah, that that's one of the things. And then there was another thing that I started because I absolutely love squigs. I bought a box of squigs about a couple of months back. Um, and what I wanted to do was I was going to do effectively a squig pile. So Beautiful. I was going to get a big oval base, big oval base, and basically i was i was either going to do it as just a big pile of squids just jumping out or something but then i found a really cool idea where i thought i'm going to do a cave wall but it's really small and then there's basically these like 10 like 10 to 15 squigs all trying to shove through this little tiny like one squid sized hole 
and all the other squigs are all just like, eh, you know, so, trying to like jump out. It's, it's really funny you say this because I, I, I had an idea for a squig diorama that I wanted to do at one point. Yeah. This was back when everybody was doing squigs. And yeah. um, it's kind of, it's sort of in my head, probably would work in a bit of a similar way i wanted to basically get an area of ground and have a bone yeah. sticking out of the ground and then all yeah. these squigs are like diving on the bone trying to sort of chew it and they're all kind of dogpiling each other and the piles just getting <laughs> and you can just see this sort yeah. of bone jutting out of the pile of squigs <laughs> yeah that was like my, my idea so i just thought it'd be funny because i just thought like, squigs are just big stupid things it would just be like you know they're one puppies. of them stood there just blocking the hole where all these other squigs are so stupid thinking that's the only way they can get out but actually they're just like clambering over each other to try and like jump over each other they, they are like definitely that. one of the miniature ranges that are designed for comedy so i, th I do think they lend yeah. themselves well to dioramas and stuff oh, yeah. like that definitely, definitely. So, so yeah that's kind of it sounds like not only are you already busy, but you're you're probably yeah. going to be really busy as well. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I feel, you know, and I've still got to try and slot in, like, aeronautica models in there as well. Oh, yeah, because, like of course, otherwise think... you might have to give up your title. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> but, um, right. It's just, it, I think it's one of those things that, like, I, I like to be busy at the same yeah. time, but this, I don't, at the minute, when there's nothing else to do or nothing to kind of get involved with, this is... It's just, it's so easy to go stir crazy if yeah. you don't have projects it on, is. isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. Right. Shall we, uh, shall we dive into this mailbag then? Because uh, yes. we have got a couple of questions to get through and ah. uh, we've been running for quite a while. We're uh, going to have to see I'm how much plenty. editing I can snip out. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Uh, yeah. Let us, let us head into our final section of the evening then. Let's go for the mailbag. Hmm. Mailbag. Right, let's kick things off then. Let's not waste any time. Uh, Greg has a question for you. He says, what 40k armies do you own? Um, I think I've pretty much gone through them. Uh, so my biggest army is Drukhari. Yep. Uh, so that's my first. So that's my big army, Drukhari. Uh, Salamanders are going to be one. I have all the models. They just haven't been built yet. And Death Guard as well. So the kind of Death Guard will be. Um, I have got a 40k, 40 scale, 40k scale Daka jet as I well. I love that miniature so much. Yeah, the was, was bomb blaster jet, but I've promised myself that I will only build it and paint it when I've finished all my orc jet, mini orc jet. So do you think that that could lead to a 40k orc army or? Uh... No. <laughs> no. No, no, not going to do no, it. No, no. I, I, I. I have toyed with the idea. I have thought about. I have. I have. To I have totted up the price of an orc army before. Like I wanted to do, uh, like a, a killer can death dread army, and I was just like, nah. I'd rather put that. It is an expensive army to collect. It is. It really is. But yeah. no, I, I. I probably wouldn't say no. I think if if Gazkor Thraka comes out as a separate model at some point out of Prophecy of the Wolf, I would very much. For sure, yeah, for sure. Okay, another one from Greg. Uh, what are your opinions on the big changes announced for Ninth so far? Things like two wound marines, uh, new weapon profiles, you know, weapon profiles getting upgraded, that kind of thing. What do you think of all that? Um, well, I, initially I started off thinking, well, I've not actually had a chance to play Ninth Edition at the minute, um, so I haven't really got any kind of strong opinions. Absolutely, and yeah. Also as well as a primarily xenos player at the minute we've kind of been i don't want to say we've been left behind we just haven't had any but some of some yeah. of the impact is a bit less felt for yeah. xenos players yeah, at this stage exactly. i mean so, some um, xenos armies have changed massively yeah. just because of yeah. the core changes of ninth yeah exactly but drukari for one for example yeah yeah absolutely um, and I think um, from from my like the, the opinions that I do have like so things that I've thought about like the terrain the current the terrain rules they're a little bit kind of complicated to kind of get my head around at the minute but I don't know if it's because I've not had a chance to play it. And they I've not, feel I've watched... they feel a bit unintuitive, don't they? Yeah, they're a bit kind of convoluted. Like Joe was saying that he's actually thinking of making tokens yeah just so that we yeah. can kind of keep track of what what's classed as a minus one to hit once what's classed as a dense 
co- you know dense terrain and all that one stuff. of the things so, i was actually yeah. thinking of is um you can get these little like stems with a crocodile clip at yeah. one end of them yeah. and i was actually yeah. thinking about making a bunch of flags that say you know obscuring yeah. dense that kind of thing yeah. breachable etc yeah. and so we were going to do like tokens pretty much to that effect yeah and so, you can basically uh, just sort of so stick a flag in each piece of terrain yeah. to show what rules it has because it does exactly. it i kind of feel like a lot of games are going to involve people forgetting what keywords yeah. a piece of terrain has yeah. and winning or losing as a result of forgetting yeah that. or they're going oh it's in the terrain but it's like oh actually it's a piece of dense terrain it's like well, hang on a second we said it was you know this right. oh no, it's going to be yeah. yeah it does it sounds um, like it's going to be difficult definitely um the other thing as well that i was thinking about is like the you know like what we would call the elite armies so like your heretic your any starty heretic starties they seem to they feel more elite now yes so therefore you need to pay the points for them so um you know and, and I, again very much i'm a very point second person because that's how i've been taught yeah yeah game, no no uh, same same power level so you know you shouldn't you know for a two thousand point Astartes army where it'd be Grey Knight, Space Chaos you know, you've got to pay those points to get Absolutely. that army. Yeah, you know, the, the you, thing is you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't be able to go on to you know, you shouldn't be able to have a two thousand point space marine and have like thirty you know, thirty like that. You've got to pay the points for like weapon if you want the I've weapon. I've I've always felt like in eighth edition there was a lot of space marine armies, for example, that would spam yeah. scouts as a cheap troops choice so that they could then take lots of very powerful elites while still having a large volume of bodies on the board because at the end of the day whilst a space moon scout is a cheap troops choice it does still have a bolter which is a good gun um it is yeah and that never felt like space marines to me I, i always when i picture space marines i think of these very elite compact um and very flexible kind of small forces of 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 super soldiers and so what i imagine is you know they they there are certain novels for example where they say things like you know a squad of space marines could conquer an entire world in a month for example and so i think to myself you know if an army of these things are amassing it's not gonna be you know 70 miniatures it's gonna be probably 30 and that's i know you know a lot more inclusive and, and i feel like ninth is good at that yeah and I, it's a bit if you think about it i, I know i know this is not part of the game but if you think back to like the the, the ultramarines film so you know there's like what 10 guys that turn up yeah, it's, it's a essentially a tactical squad and a chaplain isn't it or a, yeah there's a, i think there's a chaplain and, and an apothecary with them no there's an apothecary because it's the imperial fish chaplain that they meet that's with, right yeah with, this, with the imperial fist but it, again, it's effectively, it's like, what, five dudes that turn up on a planet that's been taken over by the Black Legion. Do you know what I mean? It's not It's not a full, you know, we're not talking like a full fucking com- you know, company that turn up at all or anything exactly. like that. Yeah. It's, it's just like 10 dudes, they're like, oh, what the hell's happened here? Oh, shit. All these Imperial Fists are dead. The only two guys that are alive is a chaplain and, you know, this random Imperial Fist. And, and, and if we look at, in canon, if we look at the... Yeah the times where you know large masses of space marines have actually gathered we're talking about like yeah. armageddon we're talking about the tyranid yeah. high fleet invasion of baal yeah you know, we're, we're yeah. talking extinction level events so yeah. your average fight that you're going to be playing out on the tabletop you know the armies probably should be quite elite and compact and small yeah. and that kind of makes yeah. just more sense exactly and which kind of leads me on to the next point about you know the two wound firstborn it yeah. makes sense it does if you think about it like law wise primaris marines are no different to firstborn marines not really no they're very small differences very very slight differences effectively they're the same genetic mutations they're just newer space marines and it should make sense that a elite looking a big chunky space marine regardless of him being primaris or firstborn should have an extra wound more than a guardsman you know well this this is where it's weird is yeah. uh, not even not even if we compare firstborn to primaris it's it's when yeah. we compare firstborn space marines to imperial guard or gretchens or yeah. snotlings yeah. you know like they shouldn't yeah. have the same number of wounds as a fucking exactly. gretchen exactly exactly you know or even like eldar you know eldar right. any of the craft worlds any of the craft craft worlds you know it doesn't matter if you're jukari or dark Elder, they've all got one wound but so you're telling me that a genetically modified like super 
is only you know is still only as squishy as a you know as a as an elf as an elf like, you know yeah do you uh, know what and I mean? bearing in mind that we regard elves as being sort of the squishy fantasy species yeah Exactly. Yeah, it's, like it's going, just oh. bizarre, and I, I, I think I agree with you. The the changes yeah. that we that we certainly can and should have opinions on so far do all seem to yeah. be quite common sense. I think yeah, it makes sense. You know, it make why you know it should you know it's not saying that pr Primaris were never these like they weren't like the elite of the elite space marines. They were just standard space marines that that went through the Rubicon. Do you know what I mean? It's just like yeah, the, and, well the all, the Upgrades between a Primaris Space Marine and a normal Space Marine are essentially, they are ever so slightly faster, ever so slightly stronger. Yeah, but, but size-wise, they're still the same height. There's, there's, not, there's not really any... I don't... Certainly, I don't recall reading anywhere where it says that they are, like, a lot more resilient to the point of being twice as resilient. Yeah, you know, exactly. like the no. the extra attacking combat makes sense because they are slightly faster. Yeah, um, yeah. and the ex the extra size, wound yeah. or, or or them them being two wounds does make sense yeah. because they are a super soldier. But yeah. it doesn't make sense for firstborn to be one wound. That you yeah. know, it's yeah, yeah. it's it's and all think, yeah, it's and a step in well, the right direction. About, yeah, I think so. And if you think about it, it's like, you know, it, it allows people that have got, like, firstborn armies that haven't necessarily been given Primaris upgrades to be able to bring them yeah. to, you know, bring them into ninth edition and I'll tell you, to feel like they're part of the new edition. So things like, you know, uh, Death Cup, you know, so if you if you play Death, uh, Death Cup, uh, is, and is it Blood Angel? the death company do yeah this. blood in, yeah blood angels yeah. don't currently have they haven't got they haven't got a prime they haven't got a primaris kit so you know if you yeah. wanted to bring death company, so you know you've got all these like okay they might look slightly smaller but so what i tell you where i think it's a stroke of genius from games workshop is it allows older players who have got out of the hobby to just unpack yeah. and dust off that army that they've yeah. got in their mum's loft yeah. and take it to yeah. the shop and go play Exactly, exactly. It's like, you know, some guy goes, oh, look, you know, I fancy playing ninth again because I didn't like the look of eighth or I didn't fancy eighth. Let's go play ninth again. And it's like, you know, I've got, oh, by the way, here's like, you know, I've got a Emperor's Children army. Yeah, from, here's my 11-year-old Chaos Space Marine army or whatever. It's yeah, like, oh, well, actually, exactly. you can just play that. Yeah, exactly. And look, there'll be things like, you know, or somebody, you know, somebody says, look, Primaris Space Marines can't go in a drop pod. I had a Ultramarines army that has like three drop pods. I can now, you know, and people go like, actually, I can bring my drop pods now and use them. Whereas yeah, because my first be Marines aren't shit anymore, so I actually can play them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> right, I've got a, I've got a quick one for you next. Uh, Sabi yeah. asks, what faction would you like to see added to Aeronautica Imperialis? Self-explanatory Jukari. Yeah. So, 100%. Tiny razor wings, tiny void raven bombers. Ah, oh, they would look so cool. Just tiny spiky uh, you know, planes. Yeah, I would say my orc army is pretty much my biggest army at the minute. But I think if and and that goes with any craft world. I think not just Jukari, but if they decided to do like a craft world uh, um, air wing, I would. I, I think that would probably be the second largest. Uh, squadron. Nice, nice. Gladly, that, that was a couple of quick ones because this last one I think is going to take us a couple of minutes to answer. The last one is a bit lengthy. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna try and read it out in a way that will make sense for the listener to understand, but obviously you've got yeah. the show notes there to remind you. Yes. Uh, Gronk yeah. asks, what do you consider to be your strengths and weaknesses as a miniature painter? Which techniques do you use? Which do you avoid? And can we have a top secret tip? Okay. Um, so for me, so my strengths, um, I would probably say that once I can get, I'm very good with colour combinations, I think. Um, I think I've got fairly sound sound knowledge of colour theory, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I can put, I can, can, I can tend to put colours well together. Sometimes I don't have to put them side by side. I can actually go, okay, you know, I'm going to, a T like when I did uh Janus Drake from Blackstone Fortress, I, I wanted I didn't want to do him the classic way. So I was like, I'm gonna do him a coat. I was like, okay, what colour am I going to do his like dragon pelt thing or whatever they call it? And I was like, well I'll go pink and pink and cream because I thought it's gonna stand out. It's gonna con it's gonna complement the 
just like screw it um you know and i've got kind of i feel like i've got a sound understanding yeah, and, and, and colour theory is it's a really good thing to have a solid grounding in as well, because, yeah. like, you can honestly, genuinely be not even a particularly competent painter, yeah. and if you just pick good colours that look decent yeah. together, you can elevate your miniatures without actually having to have any painting skill, even. You know, yeah. so, so... Sometimes, it... I think... I... Yeah, I think to myself sometimes, or even Joe says, I'll be like, I'm putting this colour in this colour, and he goes, seriously? And I'll be like, yeah, trust me, it'll work. And he'll go, okay, I trust you. And I'll paint it, and I'll show him. And he'll go, do you know what? I didn't think that would work. And you've put them, now I've seen them on the model together. They actually do, like, yeah. my, um, the, 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 the green and the purple eternal. I was like, I wanted to do a green pauldron, like an aqua green pauldron and purple cloth. And I was like, I did it on the Liberator because then he got a little bit of cloth. And I was like, the green really works. The purple's really like, right, I want to do a sequence because that's going to have more cloth on it. I wasn't too sure how, like, overbearing the purple was going to be. And I did it. And I was like, do you know what? I'm really pleased I did it because it doesn't actually look that bad. Because I thought I was going to be worried, thinking I was going to green cloth instead. Yeah. Or, or you can sometimes purple. worry it's going to be a bit much. Yeah. And it wasn't. And it's turned out. It's turned out just right as well. So, um, and I'm really, really good at that. Um, the other thing as well, I think I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm no longer scared to try things. Yeah. Um, like I used to, but I think just kind of, I just do it. You know, people, you know, when people say, I used to have this thing where I'd be like, oh my God, I've bought this model. It's so into, or I don't want to paint this. Model, it's so intimidating. Whereas some, now I'll just be like, eh. well, if I've got time, I will do it. I'll just be like, right. I'm now going to start. I don't know. Um. Uh, Lord of another Lord of Contempt because I've got two. I've got another mm -hmm. Lord of Contempt. Like you know what? I'm just gonna be a Lord of Contempt. I think fear I'm of painting. failure like yeah. really holds back a lot of painters. And I don't have like when I when I paint like Janice Drake was. I think what it was was because Janice Drake was a model, big, big ish model for me because I absolutely fell in love with it when I was still a new. I was still new to the hobby and stuff like that. And I think now that I've painted him because he was kind of like a model for me now i've painted him it's i feel like i've got over my fear of pain i mean yeah because now i'm just kind of like yeah screw it you know give me a dreadnought i'll paint that yeah why not or, why not give give me fucking uh archeon you know I'll, I'll paint archeon the only one i will say though is still mortarian mortarian is like <laughs> that is like a jesus christ where the hell do i start but yeah no i, I, I get I it i get it i mean i i, I I did a commission yeah. a couple of months ago for um, the the forty k Gilliman, yeah. And yeah. honestly, like if I was just painting it for the tabletop, probably not a problem. But because it was a commission, yeah. you know, it was I was really trying You're hard to make it look else. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And by the time I got to the end of it, I was just so exhausted from it. It's probably the <laughs> only miniature that I would consider actually turning down painting at the moment but wow. it, purely just because it was just exhausting to yeah. get it to that really high standard that i was happy yeah. with no that's, that's an... so we've done the strengths um, what are the weaknesses let's have let's have the juicy goss come on um <laughs> i was gonna say faces i i even though even though i like i did the whole face your art thing and i looked at my face and i was like you know what they're not that bad and i just i still think faces are still my I can do like animal faces. Like I looked at my gobbo and I looked at my croup face and I thought, you know what? I'm really, really proud of them. But it's like human faces where I see struggle. Yeah. yeah. And I know you've given me you've given me some tips before in the past, which I really. The, the, the and... thing is, faces in miniature painting. Um, yeah. So what, one of the reasons why I'm quite confident with with faces is because as a 2D artist, one of my main styles yeah. is portraiture. I love portraiture. I painted a portrait earlier today. Just for fun. Just because I felt like doing it. Um, and, you know, you kind of... I know 2D painting and, and miniature painting are not nearly as similar as a lot of people assume they are. They're very, very different, actually, in terms, of, in terms of the mechanical sort of application of paint. Yeah. They're very different. Yeah. But one of the things that is very transferable between the two is sort of the ability to visualise. And if you've painted a lot of faces, you kind of just naturally develop a bit of a knack for where the light and shadow likes to live on faces. Yeah. 
And therefore, yeah. when you paint a face, you just sort of know, yeah, that just needs to be a bit darker and it'll, you know, it'll look better or that needs to be a bit yeah, more, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and I think that's a lot of where, where my confidence comes from in faces. But I also think that that's actually one of the main reasons why people struggle with them is just understanding where to place the light and shadow on a face. Um you know, for, for example, a lot of the time, if you just paint a face in a flesh colour and then wash it, because the cheekbones tend to be quite puckered in on a lot of miniature faces, you'll end up with these really yeah. dark creases down here. Yeah. Yeah. Which would never occur on a real face. No, and unless don't... you've got like that, you know, like that handsome jawline or something like right. that. Right. You know? And we, we, we don't think to lighten that back up to sort of pull back, pull that back a little yeah. bit. And then we wonder yeah. why the face looks really aggressive and harsh. And it's like, well, you know, you probably just need to sort of run a little bit of pale skin tone into this area here yeah. and it all it will calm down. Agree. But yeah. it's it's not an obvious thing to master. And it's it's certainly not a weakness that will hold you down forever. It's it's a weakness that one day it will just click and you'll realise everything that you've been doing wrong and the next face that you paint will just be so much better than the last one that you did yeah. you know it, it's definitely. one of those real sort of level up moments where you just it clicks suddenly oh yeah definitely i think as well and, and the other one that i really is hair like you know like highlighting street doing it's hair, hair is oh, so like, hard i know it, and doing like um you know like fur like i'm looking at stormcast eternals like you know the plume and they've all got those individual strands and sometimes yeah. it's like you think you think i just want to just dry brush it but then i'm like no that looks crap and then i'm like trying to go in and individually highlight every single plume well this is the issue like, oh, isn't it because like if you dry brush yeah. it you get all this horizontal texture that goes against the grain of the strands yeah which yeah. doesn't look right because the strands are supposed to sort of fall. but if you line yeah. it then it's like you've got to be so precise and it's like well yeah. I don't mind doing that if I'm trying to paint this for a competition or something, but do I want to do that a hundred times for this fucking army? Yeah. So it, yeah. it, does, just, it feels like I'm a lose-lose. Just... Yeah. Um, kind of like my other, look, like, I suppose lack of confidence in my abilities. Like, I always look at my stuff and I'll be like, eh, it's all right. And everyone's all like, oh my God, that's amazing. You, you know, like the metal thing. And I'm like going, and, but I think I looked at like the night quest like I'm doing it. The... So and I look at him and I'm like, that's that's really cool. I'm really impressed with stuff. And I'm starting to be a bit more open and a bit more accepting of my abilities now. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Because I think I'm more impressed by how quick it's got me to... It's quick. I think I'm more impressed myself by how quick it's taken me to get that. Whereas... I don't know, you know how it is for you. Um, but for me, a lot of where I lack confidence in my painting is... Even if I feel like I've absolutely crushed it. Even if I feel like I've done a really good job. I'm really scared to own that and to and to act like it in case somebody else points something out that I've done wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it is. Or like somebody will turn around and they'll be like, you know, where somebody will go, I, if I zoomed into your model, I can see every, or you've, you've missed out a brushstroke. Or <laughs> I can see zoomers. that. Like, Oh, the worst one I had was, I think it was, um, it was Pius Vaughan that I did. And I was really proud of her. And it was just after I published her on Twitter, I turned around, I looked at her, and I got a bit, a tiny splodge of blue on one of the flames at the back of the model. And I was like, fuck. I, and, honestly, I <laughs> hate Zoomers. I hate people that no, take, no, no. they look at your I photograph even, of your this, miniature this, 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 and I they start. I zoomed in. Yeah, I hadn't even zoomed in, right? I could see this and it really bothered me. And I was like, there is a tiny splodge of blue on the flame. I was like, oh shit. And it really what? got to me. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to start hiding micro penises on all of my miniatures just for the people that zoom them. Just zoom in on this, you bastard. I'm just, I fucking hate them. I hate them. Or, or like paint a really small finger doing that. <laughs> like, yeah, you see like, what's that? What's that splodge on? Is that a tattoo on that? Oh no, it's a penis on his head or something like that. Yeah, got him. That'll teach him, fucking zoomers. It's like, I, 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 honestly, little little mistakes like that, like, I don't even yeah. sweat it because, I, again, it's, you know, if it's a commission, check it over for those little mistakes. Don't send yeah, something yeah, yeah. that someone's paying for to them yeah. if it's got those little mistakes on it. Do your due diligence. But if it's a model that yeah, you I painted think... for yourself and for your own enjoyment, like, you know that um, ghost kill that I did? The, like, yeah. fucking Warhammer yeah. community retweeted it. Like, it, it, it did really, yeah. really well. That's got mistakes on it, and I know where they all are. Yeah. I can tell you where every single fucking one of them well, is. That was like with, 
<laughs> well, that was like the quietest one because I I wanted to enter her into the July painting competition for like, I can't remember what it was. It was to do with the crusade. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of one. And I think that's what got it got for me. I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to enter her into the crusade, into the July painting competition. I've got her in before the deadline. I've, I've done the hashtag and everything like that. And then it was when I turned around and I, well, I saw it, the back image and I was like, there is the tiniest splodge of blue. And I was like, Fuck's sake. What like, have I done? Gold. I was like, that's it. That's why I didn't get chosen because the, the little tiny blue splodge of paint that I got on her flame just absolutely ruined it yep. for me. Throw out that pot of blue, won. never using that again. And, I, and then I looked at who won and I was just like, that's why that won. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, okay, I don't feel so bad now. Uh, we, we all do it to ourselves though. We all do yeah. it to ourselves. Right, so techniques um, that you do use and techniques that you avoid. Uh, techniques that I do use, um, like I said, paint method. I tend to pretty much follow the Citadel paint method. Mm -hmm. You know, base, wash, highlight, in various guises. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily use the wash paint. The wash paints as such. Yeah. I've started using contrasts as washes. Um, are you, are you just an edge lot. highlighter, or do you sort of do you know nice sweeping gradients on your flat surfaces uh, and stuff? depends on what i'm doing um if i was to do um space marines uh i do tend to do like i i, I don't necessarily like the tron style highlighting Me neither. i can't stand it <laughs> so, yeah like you see it a lot on the drukari range no offense to the heavy metal <clears throat> painters that painted those and no 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 painters that those but I, I i don't want my venoms and i don't want my drukari to look like they've come out of trust listen i'm not saying that that style isn't skill intensive it is fucking no. hard yeah. to do yeah. perfect edge highlights on every single panel yeah. edge it is yeah. hard i'm just yeah, saying i don't I like agree. how it looks i just don't yeah, like yeah. how it I looks mean, so i don't paint that way no, i i i i um, you know and like if i was to do space if somebody you know space marines i don't mind funny enough i don't mind edge highlighting space marines um but i wouldn't do it if i was doing a battle ready army you know yeah. but if i was just doing like the odd one or two space i mean like when i painted an old I mean, back in march um yeah i i i painted it all i think it's <laughs> and um i edge highlighted it i because i i'm one of those weird people that likes edge highlighting phobos i think you know yeah. it's it's nice to put a yeah. bit on i think yeah. just just don't feel like you have to edge highlight every single edge. No, you and, know? yeah, exactly. And so, and I, I, I did try the the soft blending highlights. Like I think when I did Drazar, when I did the original Drazar model, fine cast model, I was like, I'm not gonna do like edge, you know, like a proper Tron. I know I don't want him to look like he's wearing a Tron suit. And I was just like, no, I'm gonna do the soft edge highlight. It, it, it came out really well. I really, I really enjoyed how. It's it's so, so dependent nice on what colors you pick. Yeah, definitely. And I think I did go for the blue. I went for like the blue, you know, like the dark Reaper Thunderhawk blue. For yeah, gray, yeah. Black. Um, so that's kind of, that's what I do mostly. Um, I don't particularly follow any particular like strict methods that I don't say, you know, I'm not like the, you know, I'm, I don't do the heavy metal style or okay. I don't do like the whatever. I just kind of go, just go with what is comfortable with me yeah. and what, what I'm in need for. You know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to dry brush a space marine, I'm going to dry brush honestly i, I think for a lot of us yeah. one of the main ways that we start doing anything unorthodox or pick up any kind of new technique that we yeah. wouldn't have necessarily tried before is we see someone else do it and we go fuck me that looks really nice how did you do that and they yeah. tell you how they did it and you go well i'm going to start trying to do that now because that looks really yeah. nice and i want to be able to do it yeah exactly um freehand is still a technique that still scares the living shit out of <laughs> minute <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, things like doing tat, you know, even doing like tattoos or body art or something like that. Because it, it made me laugh. Because there's a fun fact on my pious one model. So I tried to, <clears> um, I wanted to do a tattoo of an Inquisition of the of the eye on her forehead. Yeah, you know, I thought I'm going to use contrast paint because everyone says use contrast paint, body art, brilliant. And I completely fucked it up. And I was like, whoops, okay, never mind. So I just basically smushed it into a blood. Sword. Just like, well, you just got a massive pain sword. You're gonna get blood all over her face. Look, I don't know if it's going to make you feel any better or not, but I still have to paint two-dimensional at least two or three times a week at the moment, which yeah. is technically all freehand, and I still fucking yeah. hate doing freehand on miniatures. <laughs> Can't stand it. Don't like doing it. Don't find it fun. Don't find it enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, I will... I think, like I said, it's not... I mean, and I've seen some absolutely fantastic, like, paint, like freehand stuff that people have done on, like, dozer blades, on... Mm. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, the battle 
and yeah, I think but I just that for me right now is just like that's right amazing. here. No way. Right here, I've got the top hatch door of a rhino. Can you see that? <laughs> nice. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got a word bearers icon with the book and everything on it, all ready for me to paint on it. That's been sat on yeah. my desk waiting for me to be asked to paint it for about two months. That's how much I like doing freehand, and that's not even difficult. Yeah. See, the only all right, the only freehand I like doing at the minute is flames because I think I I spent I don't know if you've seen my 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 first lot of orc orc daka jets, the my black ones, and they were flames no, all of that, think and I, I, have. I could happily do flame. I could happily do flames till the cows come home. I mean, flames I are fun flames to paint though. Salmon. They are really fun to paint. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely love doing flames. So I think that's the only bit of freehand that I would look I'd like to do at the moment. Go on then, give us that um, give us that top secret tip then. What? Would it be a? It wouldn't be a secret if it was a secret. Um, no, that's true. To be honest, that's true. Yeah. yeah, I think the only tip that I can really give to people is just practice, practice, practice. Build that muscle. It's a bit like, it's a bit like learning to play an instrument. Yeah, it? you know, you build yeah, it that is. muscle memory. Um, you build that muscle memory. You know, people go, oh my god, how do you do edge highlighting so crisp? You know, when I do, I'm so ham fisted, it goes all over the place. I'm just like, just you've just got to keep at it. There's no, there's no magic one. You know there's no magic thing um the only thing i would suggest the only thing the only personal tip i have is if you are going to do good work make sure that you haven't you're not doing it make sure that you've, you've had some sort of food you know? it doesn't mean like have a full meal just have some yeah yeah Sometimes don't don't sit down to paint for like empty... five or six hours yeah on an empty stomach yeah. Yeah, because you'll just you'll you'll tire yourself out, and you'll end up getting you'll end up getting the shakes because you basically yeah keep those sugar know. levels topped up. Really? What one of my one of my favourite little secrets is uh, just sort of halfway into your painting session, just have like a chocolate bar. Or today I had a jammy yeah. wagon wheel halfway through my painting session. Hey. That was lovely. It was nice. very enjoyable. Yeah, just something with a yeah. bunch of sugar in it, and then a nice glass of squash or something to rehydrate you. Yeah, yeah. I do that, and I, I think sometimes as well, if I'm conscious, where I've been like, okay, you know, I've been for a run or something, and I'd be like, nope, I'm, I, and you think, right, you know, I'm, I'm now showered, I'm now ready to go at the face of the day, and I'd be like, do, you know, I'd be like, no, I need to refuel or I need to eat first before I paint yeah. because the last thing you want to do, like I say, you don't want to get the shakes. Because the thing is, it's not, it's not just you know the mechanical problems that it can create, like yeah. having the shakes, for example. It's also you know your concentration yeah. is better when you're fed and hydrated. Exactly, exactly, definitely, uh, and just like create you know even if you practice and people go oh well i haven't got time to sit down and do four hours of and yeah okay sitting down in a position is not good for a long period of time but even if you just do like an hour and a half a day or an hour a day yeah you know absolutely and it's like absolutely because some people you know if you think about it it's like okay when i, when I look at it like because joe asked me he goes well how long did it take you to paint a miniature and i was like I did it over days, and he went, "No, don't think about it over days. Think about it over hours." Yeah, the actual hours like, that you okay. spent applying the paint. And I'm like, "Okay, that mini's probably taken like six hours in total." Because hmm. I'm like, I know I haven't, you know, I could, you know, I haven't actually done the whole sitting down for a whole day in paint because I don't like sitting down all the time. I do it at enough at work. Yeah, yeah, but, um, better to do it in fits and starts if that's the case. Yeah, so I'm like thinking if I'm doing, you know, I've, I've done it over. So I was like, okay, thinking back to my stormcast, I was like, okay, I did that over three nights at an hour and a half each night. Mm -hmm. So that's probably taken me like yeah, five, six hours, to, seven hours to paint, which isn't actually bad going. No, not at all. Not and, at all. It's fine. You know, yeah, and it's just one of those things. Right. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much my tip. <laughs> Gronk did ask me to answer this question as well. This is one that he asked for both of us. So I'm going to fire through it very, very quickly because I kind of already know what I want to say anyway. Um, <laughs> so I would consider my strength as a painter to be my experience. I think that's the easiest way to answer it. There's very few mm -hmm. situations I get in where I feel cornered. I tend to know how to paint my way out of whatever conundrum I'm in. And that's a very useful yeah. thing for me. But that comes from being in the hobby for over 25 years at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. what causes that. Um, my biggest weakness as a painter, if I had to be honest, is probably my attention span. I have ADHD, which means that the moment I sort of lose interest, I lose the ability to concentrate. And my concentration yeah. is very much linked to how invested, how interested I am in a piece, um, yeah. which can make completing long, extended 
projects very very difficult because as the interest starts yeah. to drift towards the end of it so does the concentration and the ability to stay focused on it so i just have to use a lot of coping mechanisms to get around that uh, a lot of palette cleansers for example i said to you you know i painted a portrait earlier um that was a palette yeah. cleanser i needed to just be away from all the shit that i was working on for a couple of hours and paint something different and I think that's not just unique to yourself. No, I think no, that not at all. even if that that's that's not just unique because of your condition. That that could be for like anybody as yeah, well. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Even if you were doing, you know, if you were painting Drukhari for like solid for like four months, right? You know, it's gonna. You're gonna be sick gonna of take, bondage elves by the end of it. I'm gonna be fed up of painting like pointy elves. Yeah, like fucking you know scalp scallop armor and stuff like that for a period of time you know absolutely I'll be desperate separate. and that's why you know it's nice to have little i used to be very much like a that's it i'm only going to be painting a singular model and nothing else whereas now i see I, I am doing a blend of projects at the minute yeah and it's keeping me interested because i'm not no longer getting bored you know thinking oh god you know these are going to be really because i have got a couple of long slog projects to get through and whereas i don't want to be painting fast mistakes i do need a bit of right okay i'm losing concentration on this project i've got this other project here where i can just dip in and just go right whilst that shade is drying on that i can pick up this and do a yeah. little bit of that so th those palette cleansers are definitely very very yeah. important yeah, 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 yeah the sorbet between courses as it were yes <laughs> uh, and then the next thing was techniques that i tend to use a lot and techniques that i tend to avoid um i'm a huge fan an absolutely massive fan of uh, glazing and specifically i tend to glaze a lot with transparent matte paints which is how you tend to produce these very sort of smooth kind of very natural yeah. looking gradients with glazing uh matte paint yeah. is really good for helping with that because matte paint um th there's a, a thing called sympathetic highlighting where any amount of yeah. satin or gloss to a paint will create a natural reflection on the surface and it will sort of hide yeah. your mistakes and then what yeah. happens if you if you've got paint like that is in certain lights you'll see mistakes and in other lights you won't see them and yeah. the main time that you won't see them is under big bright painting lights where you paint so you'll miss yeah, your mistakes yeah. and then you'll look at it from a different angle and go oh well this blend looks fucking shit so matte glazing became a really powerful weapon for me in that regard because yeah. i could take these really matte paints i could glaze with them and because they don't reflect any light back because you know, they don't reflect any sheen back i was able to really see where i had made mistakes and work on yeah, those areas that's... micromanage them get them looking nice um, the big one that I avoid, this is probably going to be a little bit controversial for, for some people. I do not edge highlight metallics at all. At no, all. That's, that's fair. No, no. That I, that's the reason why I do the technique that I do with my antique bronze. Yeah. I think if I was doing that as a, as a, as a standard like metallic, you know, like if I was just doing it as a true metallic metal paint where I'd just be like, if I just basically blasted brass scorpion over it like normally and then washed it i probably wouldn't edge highlight that at all i'd probably just you know i'd probably do like a, a dry brush or even like an almost like a stipple of like a lighter bronze or something into that but that would be i wouldn't edge highlight it like you would think you know like normal yeah, yeah so absolutely yeah. absolutely the, the, the thing for me is uh i personally really really like uh metallics have this sort of way of when you when you hit them with a wash um they have this way of sort of naturally self-highlighting um yeah. and you'll yeah. you know less of that wash will appear on the flats and less of that wash will appear on the uh on the edges and more of that wash will gather in the recesses and that to me looks more natural than when you go back and edge highlight a metal and actually force yeah. that highlight into it it looks yeah. a lot more natural without it I and agree. don't agree. get me wrong there are occasions where i'll try it again just to say to myself am i sure that this is you know am i sure i don't like this and i'll give it another go and inevitably i'll conclude no in fact i still don't like this i'm still not going to regularly do it i think i think i would probably do more like the softer highlight i'd probably like you know like rather than doing you know if you say for example if it was like lead belt and then i'd done nothing normal mm. shade into it i probably wouldn't go in with like storm host silver i'd probably go in with like iron breaker which is still a slightly darker uh, a bit of like a bit of surface glazing with metallics can be nice yeah. as well yeah 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 but yeah, yeah I, I do think that 
heavy edge highlighting on metallics is yeah it's just one that i tend no, to avoid it, just, it doesn't look real it doesn't look um realistic at all yeah like that. yeah no, I'm, I'm exactly and and by extension to my eye that doesn't look very cool which is ultimately the reason to do something is if it you know yeah. if it looks cool you do it um yeah, the last one quite, like something's gold like something's gold you know if you had like a big ostentatious gold statue you're not gonna like, yes i know it's a 28 mil miniature but it's like you're not it's not going to have those really stark like bright you know if you had like a really worn gold and then had like a bright silver highlight like, exactly i'd rather it yeah. be subtle you know, if, it had, if it would look like chip that's fine but yeah no i agree nice um the last one the secret tip and mm -hmm. i i trust you to to listen to the words that i use here very carefully because i will choose them specifically uh and okay. that is paint selfishly let me explain what i mean by that if anything that you do as a painter doesn't come from yourself, from your motivation, from your passion, from your belief, from your desire, it will never be as good. Any, any time that you ever paint purely to please others, you will never produce your best work. I 100%. I 100% agree. And that, that and is the reason why... I have entered one painting competition in my entire life. And funny enough, I won it. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but the reason I don't enter painting competitions is because from the very start of applying that paint to that miniature, you are not doing it for yourself. You are doing it to impress people who you don't even know the desires of. And it changes the way you paint. It creates a level of stress and a level of almost resentment for the for the painting that you're doing and that to me just yeah. completely destroys the point of it no i i you know what i completely agree with you on that and i think i had that attitude when i entered my first painting competition which was back in october last year mm -hmm. i on, entered uh, the the games workshop store competition and i was like yeah i'll do it whatever give it a go and i put all this effort into it and i didn't win and it was just like oh you know i felt like a real sense of there nah. i mean i and at the time i thought my miniature was great i went a little bit kind of left field with the concept and stuff like that and maybe i don't know maybe it wasn't bold enough maybe you know i'm going oh why is it win but then i'm thinking to myself no because i know the local kind of the local clique in the shop and basically you know um, it's it's you know it's everybody it's it's the, it's the basically the same three people that always win and stuff like that it's a shame but i'm like you know what screw it i managed to i threw my hat in why not yeah i gave it a but, go but this is exactly the but, point um, and th this is why painting yeah. for other people is such a self-defeating cycle is because yeah. you you remove yourself from the end product and you you put all of this time and effort and energy and passion into creating this end product and you cannot possibly know what somebody else is going to think of it until they've seen it yeah. and judged it and said what they think of it. And so I'm if you're really not successful, yeah. if you're not successful in pleasing that person, you haven't actually failed at painting. You failed at pleasing that person. Yeah. But what you now have to deal with in your head with your own emotions is failing at painting when that wasn't what you ever did you never set yeah. out you never set out to create an achievement with your painting you set out to create an achievement with your ability to please someone else yeah yeah and yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the same thing so if and you I really want to if you really want to grow and learn as a painter you've got to learn to be selfish yeah no i agree and i think that's what's happened like you know it, it's been great that warhammer community have been um asking you know have been like sharing people's sharing people's hobbies mm -hmm. you know do it especially on the, the hobby roundup twitch shows stuff like that which has been an absolutely great thing but i did notice i started to notice that there were people who were specifically painting models just in in a off chance just, just to try and get on just to try and get on the show yeah yeah and and i don't think that's right and okay i, I hand on heart and i will put my hands up I got to a point where I was a bit like that as well. I was like, I'm going to paint this mini tonight. Hopefully if I get it done by, if I get it done by like the Monday night, they might feature it on the, you know, when it used to be like on the different days of the, you know, and I won't mm -hmm. fully admit that I did that once. And then I realized to myself going, no, that's the wrong way to approach. It. Do you because know what? You're not doing it. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. I, I went through a very short period where I was painting miniatures and I was going, I'll make sure that, you know, I do this in the kind of way that I think they're going to like, because it'd be really cool to be featured. And plus, like, yeah. it's a really good yeah. signal boost, especially as a commission yeah. painter. That's a good signal yeah, boost. Definitely. And then it sort of just yeah. clicked in my head and I was like, 
No, paint the miniature you want to paint. And if they happen to like it enough that they want to share it, that means so much more. Yeah, definitely. It was like the whole like face your art thing. Like I know I'd had a couple of, I'd, prior to the <clears> face <throat> your art thing, I had a couple of miniatures featured on um, Hobby Rec. But that was before they started doing the whole asking consent thing first yeah, yeah. and then um and then like all of a sudden like, i posted the face your art and then next thing you know i got this message saying oh can we use it and i was like bloody hell okay and there, you know there were there were minis that i had, that hadn't been featured before and i thought that was really great and it was just really nice to hear like in way you talk about you know all those like the different things that i, I hadn't shown for like months and months even to, like, yeah last yeah it's a really great like feeling that. it's a really great yeah. feeling and it was just really nice whereas you know that I, I know I haven't, you know, I, I've, I've done like Zandria Azurebolt and I know they haven't featured that and I've done Draza and I'm like, I'm not that bothered anymore. It's like Pius Vaughn, I'm not that bothered, but I'm just like, you know, fair enough that, you know, there's only, they can only show so many people an hour's show, you know, and I just, I've come to, re and again, like I said, you know, I've got to, I'm, I've got to be painting myself, not just painting for the sake of thinking, oh, Warhammer might notice yeah, it, they might absolutely. put it on the show. Absolutely. You know, they, Okay, they've retweeted my stuff. I think that me that means more to me them retweeting my my stuff. Yeah, I agree. Than, I like, agree. I, I got a retweet recently, and and that yeah. really really felt good. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and and I think that's just and that's that's how it is, you know. It's and it's not and it's nice that they. Um, I'd rather that you know they they've got people that notice acknowledge things like that as well. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and I think it's 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 why it's so great that literally every single person who works for them is a hobbyist because oh, yeah. in some way or another they get it you know they they understand what it's like to want to be acknowledged for your achievements in the hobby yeah it's the good stuff it's the good stuff uh right yeah. i think that brings us about to wrap up and this i i shit you not is uh, the longest show I have ever recorded <laughs> so far. I mean, we've only done four episodes, to be fair, so that's not much of a wow. record. But for now, for now, you can enjoy having the medal. So I, broke, I have broken a record for you, then. I'm you have broken, broken a, record. a record officially. So before we wrap up, Chrissy, uh, do you yes. want to just take a moment to do any plugs, any shout outs, anything like that before yeah. we go? Yeah. Uh, well, not really any shout outs, but um, yeah, if you want to find me on social medias, um, I am on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, I am at Ishi on Twitter. That's my personal Twitter. Um, I do have an alternative account that I share with my partner, Joe, um, uh, at Fluff and Fury, the one word. And I will, so of course, put links like... to these in the description of the video so yeah, people will be able to find them easily. Fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fluff and Fury is pure hobby. Um, a combination of my hobby and joe's hobby um i do more of like stuff so you, you know i i do post majority of my projects on fury as well um i Brilliant. do post some of my stuff on, on twitter um but uh joe also does a lot of because we do a lot of like 3d printing we do a lot of build stuff like that as well so you might find stuff in there or kind of laser engraving or oh That's cool well. yeah yeah i always forget yeah. about the the laser engraving side of what you yeah do. <laughs> you do laser cutting laser engraving um we've got we've got like 3d printers we've got resin printers like that as well so a lot of the time joe does like the big build thing yeah he's yeah like, or if he's done a resin printed model he'll probably get me to it up and it's a bit of like a combination of both and stuff like that um, so yeah, that's pretty much that's that's our account. Um, I tend to run it most often <laughs> because Joe Joe hates social media. Hates the social like, media. Yeah, you are the one that's so active. I, You're definitely the one that we see the most. Much, I do most of the posting. Um, there's a, the odd one or two times. You know, if somebody asks him something about one of his models, I will get him post response. Yeah, and yeah, for one. sure. That's pretty much. And we tend to sometimes we were posting like battle reports. At I think we did a we did a corona we did a corona we did a corona special kill team where it was Grey Knights versus, <laughs> Grey Knights versus Death Guard. Beautiful. And, uh, we had beautiful. our, 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 our uh... pox, my pox walkers as a uh, yeah it was Grey Knights going to a shop. The the, the the little fluff was Grey Knights were going to pick up they were picking up a, 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 a an armored container that had got a load of rice in it, toilet paper. <laughs> but, um, 
But uh, it was being surrounded by a load of people who won't wash their hand. No, people that won't wear masks. And then there was like one plague marine that wouldn't, you know, doesn't wash his hands and doorknobs and stuff like that. So there's always that one dickhead. <laughs> as, as Death Guard. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a bit of a classic match fun. as well, to be fair. Death Guard versus yeah. uh, Grey Knights. Yeah. It's, it's a good. But that was the idea. We were just like, yeah, let's do it for fun. We'll play a game. You know, we'll play Kill Team, and it was fun. I yeah, like it. So I like cool. it a lot. Right, the last thing that we need to do, Chrissy, is just wave at the camera, say goodbye, and then we can be out of here. So thank you so much for joining me. I really, really do appreciate it. It has been wicked thank to you. have such an in-depth chat about someone much like myself who is interested in so many different aspects of the hobby. Absolutely yeah. loved it. So uh, hopefully, you know, give it another sort of 10 or 15, maybe 20 episodes or whatever. Maybe we can have you back for an update, see what you're up to more again. Than happy. At yeah, some more point, than happy to. that would be wicked. All right. So yeah. thank you very much. And thank you to everybody that's no, watching this you. video. Yeah. And I'll see you very soon. Wave at the camera, Chrissy. Wave at the camera. That's it. Bye. Bye.